in another uh, live stream. My name is Ron Henry, and uh, this is all about you guys. So uh, my goal is to sit, hang out with you guys, answer uh, any lawn care questions that you guys have, and uh, in general, just have a good time talking about the thing that we all enjoy doing, which is working on creating amazing lawns. So <clears throat> and so we have here in the uh, the show. So I got some news for you guys. Some of you guys already know. I mean, some, some good news, some, some not so good news, but uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. We've got Eric Garcia in the house, uh, Up New York NY Lawn. What's going on, man? How's it going? Congrats on starting the new channel, sir. Uh, Robert Holmes is in the house. And uh, let's see who else. We got um, Robert Robert in the house. Everyone's talking about the cold weather. And yeah, that's definitely going to be a thing, guys. Um, you know, Robert's saying that he's, they're supposed to get down to 29 degrees in South Carolina uh, tonight. And here, the last, oh, man, the last three days, three days, it's, been, it's gotten kind of nippy here in Georgia. Um, right now, I think we're like mid fifties, but it's been gotten down into the thirties at night, which is obviously not great. But um, um, I'm confidence is high. If we look at the uh, the the warming trend, the, the forecast here coming up soon, starting tomorrow, we're supposed to get back into the sixties and and seventies and, and on there out. So uh, so no no worries uh, at all whatsoever um, in that space. <clears throat> Um, for some of you guys that ordered uh, Nutrizol, there was a there was a slight delay with getting some of those shipped. All that's been taken care of. So if you make any orders for Nutrizol in the Golf Course Lawn Store, those will will go out immediately. Um, but I just want to let you guys know. Thank you for your patience. The the, the couple of people that were affected by that, I appreciate your uh, your patience with with me in the process there. So thanks so much. All right, so let's get into our first question of the night, and then I'll get, tell you guys a little bit about what's going on in my world because you guys don't really care about me. It's all about you guys, right? All right, so first up tonight we have. Eric Garcia says, hey, Ron, I saw your interview with Lee from Real Rollers. He mentioned that leveling is not always necessary. I'd like to level after getting irrigation, but is that overkill? When would you level or not? Okay, so is leveling strictly necessary for a great lawn? No, it's not. It's not, it's not strictly necessary for a great lawn. Um, but does it, uh, you know, here's the thing. If you are going to level, doing it after you've, um, after you've done your irrigation makes a lot of sense then because you're not going to then go through all the trouble of like leveling the lawn, digging it all up again and getting it, you know, messing up a, a nice leveling job. Um, and, and I wouldn't, I don't necessarily say it's overkill. It depends. Like if you, if you are real mowing your lawn or you're using a real mower, there's a lot of benefits to leveling it. Like you're going to be able to cut lower with less chance for scalping. Just from the parent standpoint, it looks a lot better. Um, one side benefit too of, uh, of leveling your lawn, uh, is that the ability of the, of the lawn to drain water or to get water away from the surface gets better. Like my lawn used to have an issue where it would hold on to water. Uh, if you've got a heavy rain, like in the back lawn, it'd be like a, a swimming pool would form back there and it'd be there for a day, day and a half sometimes. Now it's, it's literally just a couple of hours and it will all drain away and it's good to go. So there's other benefits outside of just being able to mow low to uh to leveling your lawn so it's it depends i mean it's not it's i would you're, you're definitely doing things in the right order eric as far as um i would i would definitely do the irrigation do any kind of destructive work to your lawn first and then level afterwards and then you know you don't have to do it all at one time i mean you, you can do it now and then uh later on you know in the season or even next year you could do it as far as the time to, to level your lawn um, you know, here in Georgia, it looks like we're finally going to get like a consistent warming trend starting tomorrow. We'll see. But really, uh, late April is the, I mean, it's probably the earliest I would do it. Um, May and June are usually better months. Re reason for that is you, um, you want the grass to be actively growing. So you're not looking at a sand lot, you know, for any longer than you have to. And I'm, I'm also a fan of doing it earlier in the season because then you're benefiting from like the free rain that we still get here, at least in, your, in, in the Southeast, uh, anyway, of the United States. Uh, we get quite a bit of rain um, this time of year. So, you know, you don't have to run irrigation. Like if you, if you go in top dress in July, like Alex and I did last year, it's, it the grass comes back really, really quickly, but you know, you're going to have to run irrigation if you, to kind of help things out a little bit. So, you know, if, as far as to answer your question, when, um, late, later this month would be the absolute earliest May, uh, the month of May is probably the best time, the best sweet spot in my opinion. So hopefully that helps and congrats on getting irrigation. It's a, Huge time saver and a huge convenience. So uh, that's that's really cool. Hopefully you saw my video that I released yesterday, yesterday evening on on irrigation. So just get your, get your irrigation in. Don't start watering like a crazy person. If you're again, I'm not sure where you are in the country, but if you're in the southeast, we you know we're not going to probably need to run it very much until later on this month at the earliest. But thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Let's see what else we got going on here. I already told uh, up up, uh, up New York. Congrats on his new channel. That's pretty awesome. And uh, happy Friday, sir. Happy Friday to you. And uh, let's see what else we have here. So we have a question from Robert Holmes. <clears throat> Robert says, should I level my lawn, my lawn with sand or something close to my natural soil? Great question. So 
so the my soil, um, Robert, is clay. Like most of the, the lawns around here, most of the soil in, in Georgia area, at least in my area in Georgia anyway, is that good old red Georgia clay, right? Um, and as far as um, a, a leveling mix, uh, I, I would not level my lawn with clay. So what I ended up using the, the very first time I leveled was a mix of um, river sand and, to and topsoil. So it's a, it's a blend is what we went down the lawn the first time. And then every time since then, other than July of last year, I've, love, I've done that. I've done like a, a blend, a 70-30 blend pretty much of, of, of river sand or masonry sand and topsoil. In July, because we wanted to try something different, when we did Alex's lawn, um, we just went 100% uh, masonry sand, 100% river sand. So, uh, so yes, to answer your question, no, it doesn't have to um, it doesn't have to be the exact same thing. Um, when it comes to a clay soil, like a masonry sand and topsoil blend, tends to integrate pretty well. Like I've, I've had no issues at all with my uh, with my lawn with doing that, and my lawn's been top dressed. Oh, th three times, three times, and then this year will be the fourth. Um, so, and really, the only reason I'm doing it this year is because. Um, one for this, this seeding project I'm doing, and also I need to fill in some content for the course, so that's why I'm doing it again this year. But yeah, uh, but yeah, you, you, sand is is a is a good um, good choice. I would also make sure you get some organic um, an organic component added to it, especially if it's your first time doing it. All right, so hopefully that helps answer your question. And uh, yeah, let me know if I can if I can help with anything else. So guys, I don't know if you guys have been watching the channel, but this past week has not been not been good, not been good. I was out mowing. Um, it was Sunday, actually, it was Sunday of last week, Sunday morning, and I was rushing because I was finishing up, I literally had finished up the mow, and I was going out to help a buddy of mine move, and I was a little bit careless and nicked the side of, like, the, uh, the driveway and damaged my Greens Master. So if you guys go to, like, to Ron Henry and, like, in Google and put in YouTube, like, broke my mower, you'll see everything about it. But in the meantime, since the, the Greens Mower, uh, the Greens Master's broken, it's been, it's been at, um, at Jerry Pate since Monday morning, super early. I've had to bring the true cut back out, man. The true cut was like, you know what? You've had me sitting on the bench all this time. Put me in, coach. So I uh, did get Robert's comment over here. So I got the true cut out, dusted it off. And uh, the guys at Real Rollers hooked me up with that nice, shiny awesomeness that you guys see there. If you guys have been following the live stream, you guys know that last year they gave that to me. And, and really, uh, this year or this, this past week, is when I got around to installing it. So it's got like a, a nice grooved roller on there now and I was able to cut with it. And it, it does a really good job. There is a noticeable difference in the quality of cut with a grooved roller versus a smooth roller, but it's still not as good as a Greens Master. So it's uh, it's definitely standing in, it's getting the job done. The lawn is is it's, it's looking good, you know, and, and hopefully I'll get my Greens more back late next week. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we'll see. Um, and uh, I'll be able to get back out there and mowing. So all this cool weather has actually been kind of welcome because it slowed down the growth a little bit. You guys, you guys don't know. I mean, hopefully you guys don't throw, uh, you know, throw too much shade at me, but I've been doing my, like, my, my cold dance here in Georgia to try to get the, the temps to drop down so the grass won't grow quite so much. But that's going to run out um, here starting in the next uh, next day. Starting tomorrow, it's supposed to get warm. So, And again, if we look at our forecast, I can show you guys that. Look at our forecast here for the Gainesville area. It's uh so it's 57 degrees, it's supposed to get down to 34 tonight. But after that, it's like in the 60s, 70s, 80s. So confidence is high, guys. It's gonna be getting warm, so you guys should be good to go. All right, so let's see what else do we have uh going on here. So yeah, Russ Johnson has a question. It's a good one, kind of on along the same lines. He says, Do you think the cold weather will will stunt your turf, uh, Ron? Um, I, I don't believe so, uh, Russ. So I mowed last time uh last time I mowed was yesterday. Um, yesterday morning, and um, the, the material still came off the ground, it's, the, off the, the lawn. It's still growing nicely. Um, today, I was looking at it; it looks fine. And then, you know, tomorrow it's going to get in the 60s, and then the day after that, Sunday into the 70s. So, you know, yeah, the cold snap definitely um, could it have slowed things down a little bit, sure. But it's, as far as like the lawn going back in the dormancy, it's just not going to be enough cold. It's not going to be cold long enough to cause that to happen. So I'm not not too worried about it. I wouldn't sweat it uh, if I were you. I would just, you know, mow your grass. It's going to be. It's gonna be absolutely fine. We got a ton of warm weather on our way here, so there's uh, no reason to to worry about um, about the lawn being stunted or dormant or going or anything negative happening to it. But wait, my lawn has been at just over half an inch since late January. So you know if that if that's worth anything to you as far as um, as far as that goes, and it's still greened up super early. It was the first lawn in the, in the neighborhood to to green up. So yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about it too much. All right, so let's see what other um, who else we got in the live stream tonight. Papa Mo's Lowe's in the house. What's going on, sir? Thanks for hanging out in the live stream. Thanks for coming in and hanging out with me on a Friday night. Very, very cool. Tim is finally, just, Tim, finally, you always, you always message me saying, you know, I'm always, uh, I always have to catch the replay. So finally, you're here on the live stream 
when it's live, which is pretty awesome. So thanks for uh, for coming to hang out uh, with uh, with us here tonight. And uh, let's see what are the questions we got here. So Saul Lopez is in the house. SoCal Long here. Uh, Timothy Wolf, yeah, man, looking 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 very good. And the Longineer. So yeah, all all the usual suspects. So we have a, a point here from a sweet lady. She says, uh, a, hi everyone, sub yesterday. I need help out here in these wee streets. So thank you so much, sweet lady 0512 for um, subscribing. Actually 012, that's my, that's my daughter's birthday. So uh, I'm assuming that's what it is, May 12th. So that's my daughter's birthday, it's cool. Um, but thank you for subscribing to the channel, I appreciate it. And uh, the next question we got here is from Craig Dills. He says, Ron Henry, Craig. She's curious to see if you're seeing any weed pressure yet since you are foregoing pre-emergence this season. Uh, any updates? Um, no, not really, Craig. So uh, the the place where I'm where I'm seeing weeds in the lawn are the places where I normally see them, regardless of whether I have pre-emergent down or not. So between um, pretty much on the fringes, right? So um, where on, if you if you're sitting on the patio looking at uh, out towards like like the rocks on my lawn, like you guys see on the videos all the time. On the right side and on the left side, like where the neighbor's lawns meet and where there's this is kind of dead area where there's like pine straw um, and that kind of thing. Like along there, I'll get some weeds that I have to go out and pull. And that's pretty much been the extent of it. Also, keep in mind that it's not really warm enough yet for like crabgrass or a lot of the warm weather weeds like Spurge and all those guys to really come out. So it's a little bit early to say for sure how much um, or how badly the lawn's going to be affected, if at all, by not having pre-emergent on it this year. Um, but so far it's been, it's been just like, like normal, no, no real changes, no real, uh, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. And hopefully it stays that way. And literally when I see small things, I mean, even like last year, when I had pre emerge on the lawn, when I mow, if I see a little weed, I'll just, you know, I'll just get down and pull it and, you know, hold it in my hand until I get to the end of the pass and get rid of it. So it's, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not that big a deal. I mean, weeds are not, um, you know, you don't want a huge outbreak of weeds, obviously, but I mean, a small weed here and there, just pull it. It's not that, not that big a deal, but I will definitely keep you posted as far as how the lawn does. And, uh, you know, if I get a ton of weeds, you guys are going to see it because there's going to be a lot of content filmed on the lawn this year. So you guys will definitely, uh, definitely see what happens. All right. So let's see what else we got going on here in, uh, tonight. Uh, we got Daryl Tunstall. Daryl's in the house. What's going on, Daryl? Actually, Daryl, I actually got to mention to you. Yeah, so Daryl sent me a t-shirt and he had a good idea. So I wanted to show, show this to you guys. He sent me a, um, he bought like a, a, some merch out of the store. He says, hey, listen, hey man, I got like the Stripe Action shirt. I want you to show it on the live stream. So this is Daryl modeling his Stripe Action t-shirt with his True Cut. You guys can't really see it here. Actually, if I can bring it up a little bit. Yeah, you can see his True Cut is 20 inch there looking clean. Nice, nice, Daryl. I really appreciate it. We got that clean strap action shirt, sir. So I appreciate you uh, repping the, uh, the the merch. Thank you so much for sending me the picture. And uh, yeah, as promised, I said I would show everyone the live stream and I did, man of my word. So very, very, very cool, man. Hopefully everything's going well. I hope you're enjoying that 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 uh, new True Cut. So I know it's a, it's always fun getting a, a new real mower. All right, so I uh, got Neil in the house, Osas, and then LG. We have, you know, YouTube, between LG and JG. Again, I always call them like, uh, you know, YouTube live stream world. So you'll go to any of the live streams and and, uh, and and those two are always on. He says he's got himself a tall glass of carbon Kool-Aid. It's go time. Yeah, man. So actually, that's a good point because we are in the um, the beginning of April. April Fool's Day was, was yesterday. I was, thinking, I was thinking about putting down, like make, making a joke, like saying, hey, guys, I'm going to switch my lawn to the Zoysia or something crazy. But none of you guys would believe me. I couldn't pull it off. So I just I didn't I didn't bother with any kind of April, April Fool's jokes. But uh, this weekend is goat is like another reset, right? So this weekend is the time for my granular to go down. Um, so that Humic Max is going to go down, and then my carbon kit application. Um, yeah, so that's that's going to be the thing this weekend, and along with some Carbon Pro G. Um, I'm going to get my hands on some Essential G here, uh, and I'm going to start using that for a lot of the season. But yeah, this weekend because it's, it's the first of the month, first weekend of the month, that's when the granular, my liquid's going to go down, and then the middle of the month, like two weeks from now. I'll just uh, do a, a spoon feeding touch up. So yeah, this weekend is gonna be a lot of fun. I'll be get to mow tomorrow and do some uh, fertilizer and liquid spray foliar applications. So always good. Always the, the beginning of the month is always fun, right? Except for all this cold weather. But hey, can't can't complain, right? Can't you have to take the good and the bad. But thanks for coming to hang out, uh, LG. I uh, appreciate it. All right, let's see who else we have in the uh, in the house tonight. Splash is here. Uh, Daniel Robinson, happy Friday. Uh, Daniel, yeah, you're freezing in Georgia too, man. I know, hopefully, I knew we were gonna get one more cold snap. Like if you guys looked at my videos from last year um, on Malorganite, the Malorganite series, and I was like showing like how quickly, like how quickly it takes Malorganite to take effect. Like into April, we had quite, we had some cold snaps in the 40s and whatnots in the morning. So this is, this is kind of expected. It's a thing in Georgia. Um, looking at the forecast, so if that holds true, where it looks like we're gonna, we should hopefully have smooth sailing 
for at least you know ten days or so. So we'll see. We'll see. Don't uh, don't wa- don't worry too much about it. Um, let's see. Papa Moslo says any updates on our baby? Yeah, man. So I I called uh, Joey. Not even call. I texted Joey at uh, Jerry Pate this morning. And he said, um, that, look, I texted him yesterday. He said that the parts were on their way in and they should be there, should be here anytime soon. Um, because today's Good Friday, they close a little bit early. So I don't know for sure if the parts made it today or not. But the goal is to get it back um, next, hopefully the end of next week. That's that's what I'm, I'm hoping for, fingers crossed, if everything goes to plan. I don't know if that's going to work out, but hopefully, hopefully it uh, it does. Those guys are going to, I told them, they're going to they're gonna make sure the mower's right. And we should be good to go. And as far as what's going to happen, I decided to not um, to not weld the reel. So it's going to have a new reel, a new bed knife. And while they have it, I'm just going to have them go and freshen it up. You know, change a couple of bearings out. Um, and there's a belt that I wanted to get replaced. So I think it's going to get done this time. So while while it's down, just get them to go through it and and uh, and touch up a few extra things that I didn't uh, I didn't opt to get done earlier in the year. So. I got the true cut. I've got something I can mow with. It's not that big a deal. It's not as nice as the Greens Master, but I have a real mow, right? So I should not complain, right? And and honestly, with the with the grooved roller attachment, it actually is doing a lot better. So you know, if any of you guys are on the fence about putting a grooved roller on your real mower, might be worth considering, man. It is it, it's it is noticeably better. It is noticeably better. All right, yeah. So and that's something I'm gonna do when I get the the Greens Master back is I'm gonna do a comparison between the Greens Master and the um, the True Cut with the Groove Roller. One thing, when you guys ask me, I told you I'd answer in the live stream, I can do that now. You're, they're asking about the, the cut differences. And the biggest difference, and because I hadn't been cutting with the True Cut for such a long time, I didn't really notice it. Um, but now that I've, I've been using the Greens, the Greens Master for a while and gone back to the True Cut, the biggest difference you notice is that the, the Greens Master stays connected to the turf. Like the way the weight is, the weight is distributed on it, like it just doesn't come off the turf at all whenever you're you're just making a pass. With the true cut, because the weight's kind of more biased, you kind of have to add just just a, just a slight upward pressure to make sure that the that the real that the front roller stays in contact with the turf evenly as you're making a pass. So those kinds of things, those small things, plus like the fact that the clip rate and the the drive system are, are linked on the Greens Master, like you don't really realize how much all those small little things add up to a better cut. But I, I mean, to my eye, it looks it, there's there's a noticeable difference. Like I mean, everyone looks at the lawn now. They say, "Oh, it looks great," but it's it does make a difference. All right, so let's see what else we got here. David Lee saying, "Please press the thumbs up and like button for me. I appreciate it, guys. If you guys are enjoying the live stream, I know we're just getting started. I know I haven't probably earned the like as yet, but if you guys can trust me and know that I'm gonna hang out here, I'm gonna answer your questions. If I can get you know get a like, I'd appreciate it. it. Sends good vibes to the algorithm, and we'll hopefully send some more people our way to hang out. All right, so." Uh, uh, Joshua Chastain says he's uh, upper 40s in Northwest Florida. Yeah, dude, that's not that's that's a uh, that's cold. That's very 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 cold. All right, so let's see what other questions we got here. So next question is up from Saul Lopez. He says I have a lot of poa. Any advice to kill it and prevent it from growing? Uh, sure, sure, Saul. So uh, we'll take those. Um, let, well, I'll answer the question in reverse. So the the best way to prevent poa in your lawn is with fall pre-emergent. So if you've not, I mean, so right now you can't really do a whole lot about that, but coming up this fall, so like September, October-ish, um, put down a good fall pre-emergent, and that's going to do a lot to reduce um, the amount of poa that you have to deal with in the spring. Because the poa you're seeing now germinated, you know, began germinating like months ago. It's only now that we're getting a little bit of heat. It's kind of, it's really starting to become a thing and, and, and grow. Um, so the best way to prevent it is fall pre-emergent. As far as how to kill it now, there's a couple of different options. Um, the one that I recommend for most people that are that are is is safer. You're less likely to injure your lawn. Is to uh, use image. Now um, I, I've got a video. If you go to um, if you go to YouTube and you type like Ron Henry Poana Poanua, um, you'll there's a video I did. It's got like a big. It's got a the name of the title or the thumbnail. It's got like kill this weed and it's got like a big picture of of, of Poanua. Um, and I like that one because it's you're not likely to injure your lawn if you don't do things exactly right. Um, and you know the 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 positive about image is that it does work. I mean, on Alex's line, I need to take a picture for show you guys how how the results we've gotten. It absolutely works, but it is slower. So you, you when you apply um, image to your lawn, figure it's going to be three to five weeks before it really begins. Before you see like a big visual difference in how the poana falls off. So you you can, you'll apply it. Maybe in, a, in in by the second week you might see a little bit of yellowing, but it's normally between that th- week three to week five period is when the poanio really begins to start hating life, right? So um, that would be my resu- my my recommendation for a post immersion. There are other options like negate is an option that you can use, but the, the way you're supposed to mix it 
um, tends to have you end up with a lot of uh, herbicide that you have to get rid of eventually, like in, in, within a four to six week period. So um, my recommendation would be just to use um, Image. It's super easy to mix. Um, and if you, you look at the video that I've got there on, uh, on YouTube on the subject, you can see exactly how to mix it, how to apply it, um, and you'll get a good result. But just be patient because it's gonna take, it is gonna take a while to work. And honestly, with, with the heat that we're getting here, like it's gonna start getting hot here soon. I'm not sure where in the country you are, but it's gonna start warming up here pretty soon. And the point is gonna, again, this the heat is gonna, is gonna have a lot of trouble. Once the Bermuda begins taking off and um, more heat arrives, you know, it's, it's, it's not gonna be as much of a thing as it is, as it is now. But if you wanna push spray something, image would be what I recommend. So hopefully, hopefully that helps. All right. Let's see what other questions we got here. Um, Michael Harner is, that, is a question about overseeding. It looks like he says, hey, Ron, I got a pound of Arden 15 to, kill, to fill in some bare spots. What's the best way to do that? If it doesn't take well, I'll probably just get saw, but I'd rather work right the first time. Okay, so if you watch the video that I put out, I don't know, earlier this week on seeding or overseeding, like the, the idea behind using Arden 50 or using any, really, any Bermuda grass seed to fill in bare spots um, really isn't um, isn't what I would recommend because if you think about it, like if your lawn, I'm assuming your lawn is Bermuda already, right? If uh, if the area that has thin spots um, is has enough shade is not shaded and the soil's decent, like it really shouldn't be shaded. It shouldn't be it shouldn't be thin, right? So if, as soon as you start mowing it, like if, you, if Bermuda has enough sunlight and it's growing in reasonably decent soil, it doesn't have to be even great soil for Bermuda. But if it's growing in reasonably decent soil and there's no shade, like it's getting direct sunlight, um, and you're mowing it frequently enough those thin spots should really fill in. You know what I mean? So if the, 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 here's the issue I, I, I'm trying to um, kind of keep you away from. If you get out there and you put down Arden 50 on in that, this thin spot of your lawn, and let's say it's a shaded spot, so you didn't give me, you didn't tell me for sure like why it's, why it's bare or, or thin. Um, the same problems, the same issues that's causing the area to be thin now didn't go away. Like they're still gonna be there, right? So if you, if you, even if you are able to put down, say Arden 15 or put down some other thing or even put down sod, and um, and you don't do something about it, like you don't increase your mowing or you don't like eliminate shade. If you got like a, like a tree that's like, that's, that's covering a lot of sunlight, um, eventually you're gonna have the same problem all over again. Does that make sense? So I, I would not look at, um, certainly not R15, certainly not seeding as a way to fix thin or bare spots. That's really more of a cool season lawn thing. Um, for warm season grass, especially Bermuda, if it's, if there is, again, decent soil, and most importantly, like direct sunlight, it's gonna grow, it's gonna grow. And again, I'm not, I'm, if you're, you're, we're still early in the live stream, so if you can, just like let me know if, you, if the area has shade or if it's an area where people are driving on or it's a lot of high traffic area or whatever the conditions are that's causing it to be thin, because I think we, you might be trying to solve um, the problem like in not necessarily the most efficient way, if that, if that makes sense. So, and if you also, if you've not seen that video that I just, I launched, um, again, it's been a couple of days ago, earlier this week, on seeding, literally, it's, uh, it's all about like seeding or overseeding, and uh, and literally, I spent the first like six minutes of the video pretty much trying to convince you that it's not the best idea for like most people. Um, but check that out, and if you have any questions, let me know. And if there's any other context you can add that'll help me out uh, answer your question better, feel free to leave it in the comments, and I'll come back to it. But uh, but yeah, um, as as far as like the tips I can give you, like check out that video. Um, it'll it'll talk a lot about that. But the, the long short of it is for for germ to get seed to germinate, Bermuda grass seed anyway. It needs tons of water, so it needs water. You can just really never really allow it to dry out for like three weeks. So you're gonna be watering morning, probably around noon time, and in the evening time every day for three weeks unless you get rain. And that is assuming that all the other conditions are right, meaning you've got like not, you, the soil is decent and that you're getting plenty of heat and direct sunlight. So then in a nutshell, that's what it takes to build, grow Bermuda. But let's but you know give me some more context around what's going on, why the lawn is thin in the first place, and see if we're, we're trying to solve the problem the right way. And that's great, great question. I was, I was hoping I would get a question on seeding or R15, so I get to go through that. But, um, but yeah, thanks, Michael. Hopefully that's helpful. And uh, I'll look, to look in the, in the comments here to see if there's any additional context that will help me uh, follow up with the question a little bit better. All right, let's see what other questions we got here. So Karan Smith says, "Hey Ron, what do I need to be doing to my lawn right now? I have not done any fertilizing yet, so it's, it's hard to say, Karan, without knowing where you are. I'll answer it as if you are in Georgia. Say you were my neighbor, right?" Um, if you were my neighbor, if you were here now, um, like, and you were not like Alex or someone like who, or our lawn's a little bit further ahead uh, than most people, I would start with, I would put down a granular now, like a, like a great choice, again, assuming that your, your, your soil doesn't, doesn't need phosphorus, 
is that Humic Max um, product, the, the Lebanon Turf Fertilizer that I, that's now available in the golf course lawn store right in here. It's called Humic Max. Um, I would put that down, and the thing is that goes down at a relatively light rate. So if you put it down at the lighter rate, which is going to be like three pounds per thousand, that's only going to put about half a pound of nitrogen into the lawn, which isn't a ton, and it's a nice little wake-up amount, wake amount of nitrogen, right? You're not trying to push a ton of growth. You're not slamming like tons of like quick release nitrogen in it that's going to, you know, try and push growth in the lawn is still, for most lawns anyway, most warm season lawns are still trying to wake up. Uh, that is, that's what I would do. But yeah, you, you absolutely can start uh, fertilizing now. Um, there's no, there's no issue with that. I mean, I've been, I've been fertilizing, I don't know, quite almost, almost, a, almost a month now. I mean, I started out with just strictly liquid and then um, tomorrow my granular for the month of April is going to go down. So yeah, you absolutely can. And again, I'm answering this question as if you're in the Southeast United States, like you're my neighbor. So if you're in like New York, then ignore what I'm saying because you're, you probably have like another three, four weeks before you probably should be putting any fertilizer on your lawn because it's a lot cooler up there. But if you are in the Southeast, in Georgia, and you have a warm season lawn, um, and the lawn is beginning to green up, which at this point it should, it should be coming out of dormancy. Uh, you're, you're good to go with a light fertilizer application. And then the most important, once you fertilize it, just start mowing it. Like literally guys, I can't, I mean, I know last week I did like the entire title of the live stream was like, was mow, mow, mow. I can't stress you guys how much like just regular mowing is one of the best things you can do for your grass. Like you want to grow and look really nice, just like mow it a lot. But hopefully that helps um, answer your question, Kuran. I'm not, again, if, if you're somewhere else in the country, like let me know further on down and I'll, I'll get back to it. But um, yeah, you're certainly good to um, to put down a fertilizer now. If you've not done a soil test, uh, it's a good idea because that's going to, the, the thing is we're still early enough in the season now that if there's something weird going on with your soil and you need like, say like everything's low, like, you know, your, your nitrogen, um, phosphorus, and potassium, all of them are low to where you need to be like on uh, a balanced fertilizer, like a triple 12 or something like that. Like knowing that now is going to allow you to make a good choice that's going to carry you throughout the season. So you know what kind of fertilizer to use. It's going to give you the best results on your lawn. So if you've not done a soil test as yet, um, I would do one. The one that I recommend is this guy, the one from my soil. You can get them on the golf course lawn store again here. Uh, and that's just going to, that's going to allow me to give a better answer to your question. But if you want something that's a great product, that's going to both feed the soil and feed your lawn, uh, the Humic Max product that's again on the golf course lawn store, because it's got that humic acid in it. So you're, you're getting like a combination product when you go with that. So hopefully that helps. And uh, let me know if I can help with anything else. All right, let's see what else we got here. So Tim Borsky saying uh, next week uh, '90s. I got the wrong person. He says next week is '90s in South Texas. Yeah, we're not we're not in the '90s yet, and I'm I'm not wanting the '90s. I, I want like a nice solid, like '75 to '80s, like '82, like there. If we can just kind of hang out there for several months, I'd be that'd be perfect for me. So we'll we'll see how long that uh, that works. I, I saw in the forecast we got a couple of days in the '80s here, so I'm probably be like where you are, uh, Tim, here not too not too long from now. Super TAs in the house is going on, sir. Congratulations on, you got the outlet, right? I think you got the outlet. I think I saw you on, on uh, Instagram. So I, even though you didn't mention it, we got to give you some applause for that. Congratulations on the new real mower, sir. I'm sure you're going to get your stripe action down as you get more used to mowing, get those low stripes straight, but you got a nice tool. So congratulations on, on the mower. I think, I, I think it was you. I saw that on, uh, on Instagram. Awesome. So let's see what we got going on here. Andy's lawn cares in the house is going on. Andy, he said lawn's waking up nicely in Chicago, but it's very dry. Yeah, in Georgia... Uh, it's very wet. Like we get nice things. We've been getting regular rain here, so which has been really good for the lawns. You know, not really having to run irrigation, which is uh, which is pretty cool. All right. So, question here about fertilization from Daniel Robinson. He says, um, "Can you put down turfplex down the lawn when it's coming out of dormancy? Spoon feed rate? Uh, yeah, Dan. Yeah, Daniel. So that's what I did with my lawn. If you guys want to understand like how I whoop my lawn up this season." is in early March, I started out with just this, with just Turfplex, right? So this guy here, this is a 20, it's a 20, uh, two, three, and you're probably saying, wow, 22, three, that's a lot of nitrogen. That seems like a lot, a lot of nitrogen to put on the lawn uh, to wake it up. But I put it down at a very, very light rate. The lowest rate that um, BioPro lists for that fertilizer is um, it's like six ounces per thousand. And what that ends up putting down is like a 10th of a pound of nitrogen, so not very much. Uh, so you can, you can pretty much, um, Daniel, yes, you could use that to wake up your lawn. I was, that's what I actually did with mine. This is what I literally started out the season with. I mixed this along with the, the contents of the carbon kit. And that's how, we, how I woke up my lawn this season. It worked out really, really well. It's a really, really nice product. It's, it's everything that Brand Supreme Green was and then some, because you got a little bit of uh, seaweed, a little kelp in there. Um, it's got the same micronutrient stack. So it's a really, really good product. It's what I'm going to be using um, as far as my spoon, spoon feeding program. So if you want to start out light, you could 
go with that. You could go at six ounces per thousand, or you can go a little lighter. You can go four ounces per thousand. You know, if you're just trying, if your lawn is is like literally just now waking up, and you just want to give it just a little, you know, a little something to get going. Uh, Turflex is a great a great option. Again, that's 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 literally what I did for my lawn, and you guys saw see how it looks now. So that's you know that's that's a great choice. And if you, if you don't have it as yet, you can get it um, here on the Golf Course Lawn Store. So. Uh, so awesome. Yeah. And I got you your rate. Um, the thing, again, if you're, if you are, have, if you have a four gallon backpack spare, just remember that rate, you're going to multiply by four. So let's say you're going for the full, you know, the lowest rate, which is six ounces per thousand. You're going to be putting in 24 ounces of the Turfplex with four gallons of water. So just, just to keep that in mind of how the math of that's going to work. But yeah, good to go, man. It's a great product. I think you will enjoy it. If you have any questions, let me know. And uh, yeah, good luck on getting the lawn going. All right. Let's see what other questions we have here. So we have a question here from Suburbia Dad about moss treatments. He says, he says is any great uh, backpack spray treatments for moss control? I just need some spot treatment, Indiana climate zone. So I don't, you know, there's a, there's a product that Scott's makes called Moss EX, but I think that's, a, I don't think that's a, that's a liquid. Um, I don't think that's a liquid. I think that's a, that's a granular. So um, because I've never had to deal with moss uh, Suburbia Dad, um, I don't have a liquid moss treatment for you. I believe, like this guy here um, that I'm looking at, I'm pretty sure it's a granular. I'm almost, I'm almost positive it is. So yeah, if I, I'll cut over here, so you can take a look at that. Like this guy, um, this is a product that the, the people that I've recommended to have had really, really good results with it. Um, and you know, but I believe that's that is a granular. So uh, you know, I'm not, I, I don't have, I don't have one off the top of my head that I can give you um, that will go in a backpack sprayer. I guess the question I have, to, I'd wonder is like, how much moss are you are you dealing with, and um, have we identified why you why you've been dealing with moss in the first place? So again, the, you know, a couple of things that can cause that is like, you know, not great drainage. Um, if your soil is particularly acidic, like if your pH is low, that can contribute to moss. So um, while, you know, moss X um, can work, or if we, if we can find you like a liquid one, that can help with treating it. We want to figure out like why we're even getting moss in the first place, if that makes sense, you know, because even if you, you use, you know, I can give you like a liquid um, uh, option or you even use like that, that, that moss X I was just showing you, um, it's going to come back or it can come back if, we, if the conditions that are, are causing it to be a thing in the first place um, don't go away. You know what I mean? So just, um, it'd be interesting to know a little bit more about like what the conditions are like. I mean, if you've not done a soil test, you might want to take a look and see if your soil is particularly acidic. And also if you're dealing with a, a, an area that is a, a combination of a lot of shade and um, really wet. So like if whenever it rains, if that area doesn't drain very well, like all of that kind of adds up to conditions that um, moss tends to like. So we want to, we want to like take a look at those and, and, and address those Versus only, um, you know, putting like a, a herbicide down on, on the moss to try and try and kill it. That makes sense. But great question. Great question, sir. Let's see what else we have here. Um, da, 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 da. Lawn journeys is in the house and uh, going back and forth and uh, reef keeping on a budget. He says, hey, what's up, brother? How's your neighbor's lawn coming along the season? It's looking really good. Uh, it's looking really, really good, actually. Um, I actually, I need to do that. So next over the course of if not this weekend, I will film an update showing both um, Alex's lawn and my lawn because I haven't actually done that. You guys have probably got to see little clips of it here and there, uh, but I will do a full like, hey, this is what the state of Alex's lawn at this time of year. His lawn is greening up really nicely. Literally, if you if you drive in the neighborhood, it's crazy. You drive up and literally it's like dormant lawn, dormant lawn, and it's like two green lawns right next to each other. So uh, Alex is a wild man, man. He's always out there mowing. When, like when I'm mowing, he's mowing. So, you know, that's that's the big thing. And then the same stuff that goes on my lawn goes on his lawn. So that's, it just shows that the, you know, the, 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 the program, the products, the things that the, the system that I, I use on my lawn works and it can be duplicated on another lawn, especially even one that's really only started getting pampering and love, um, you know, starting around the summer of last year. So it's really, really cool to see that both the lawns are kind of tracking, you know, fairly, fairly close, fairly close. Um, and Reef keeping on a budget. If you get a chance, man, shoot me an email. Like uh, I know you you had that, that issue you were telling me about with ha with Hydrotain. If you can send me an email here, Ron at golfcourselawn.com. I'd like to find hear a little bit more about that about like, the application rate you used, um, and then we can figure out like what what whatever happened there. But uh, but yeah, hopefully if you don't mind, reach out to me, and I'd like to uh, to get in touch with you. Awesome stuff. But yeah, Alex's lawn is doing great. He mowed. Um, yesterday yeah he, he was out there mowing yesterday they get like yesterday evening so yeah he's always uh he's always out there doing it when i'm mowing he's mowing all right let's see what we got here uh Dimitri, what's going on man how's it going thanks for, for chiming in thanks for chiming in and then david lee uh, another island man representing from jamaica it looks like jamaican you're jamaican uh so what's going on david thanks for uh for hanging out. Always, always nice to see other people from the caribbean um in the live stream so it's uh it makes me feel not so alone you know which is good 
All right, so Reef asking a very, very personal question. He says, also, how often do you cut your lawn? A lot. Um, literally, uh, at least, let me see here. Because this this week, the, the past week has been a little warmer, I was cutting it every other day just because I just, I really missed mowing my lawn and I really like mowing it. Um, but really, you can get by with, I, I, my lawn really at this point, I could cut it probably twice a week and be okay. Yeah, I could be twice a week and be okay. But really, because I enjoy doing it, I just, I cu I've been cutting it every other day. So, I mowed yesterday, didn't mow today, and because the weather's gonna be nice tomorrow, um, after karate, either before or after karate, we'll see, I'll uh, I'll probably get up there and mow the lawn really quick. I have to, I'll have to see, depending on, on when I do it. I'll either mow tomorrow or Sunday, but the lawn will be mowed this weekend. Um, but again, as far as like, I always say the minimum, if for a nice looking lawn, regardless of whether you're using a real mower or a rotary, twice a week, uh, twice a week, because I see your name, Reef, <laughs> twice a week, <laughs> uh, Reef on Keeping Budget. Um, but in my case, I, you know, I've been mowing more than that. I've been mowing every other, every other day this past week. Before that, it was like every, you know, three days or whatever. So, um, so yeah, just, it depends. But yeah, the more, the more you mow your lawn, the better it's going to look. A lot of what you see is because my lawn is mowed, um, mowed quite a bit. And then I also spent a lot of time working on getting the soil to be as good as I possibly can. Cause that's, that's what helps produce that really nice, that really nice color. So hopefully that, uh, that helps answer your question. If you have any more, let me know. All right, uh, two shots of vodka. I know, because it's the, the the vodka is for cows. So I, I remember from last week, man. How's it going, sir? I'm glad that you're hanging out in the live stream. Uh, thanks for uh, for coming to hang out with us again uh, this evening. All right, let's see here. Alex, uh, me, see. So Alex, Alex is trying to start shaking. Says, with your mower out of commission, is your neighbor Alex now dominating you? Oh, we're probably running neck and neck. I mean, the thing is, the true cut is still doing a great job. I'm not sure if you, how, when you joined uh, Alex, but I do have another mower. I mean, if you just join, I'll show you what it looks like. This is my um, my backup mower, it's the True Cut, uh, and it's got the grooved roller on there. You see there, the nice shiny new grooved roller that uh, courtesy of the fine people at Real Rollers. That is what I am working with here over the next week until I get my Greens Master back. So. No, the domination isn't isn't uh, isn't happening yet. I'm and worst case, Alex would let me borrow his mower if my if my mower were completely out. So you know, there's no no domination going on or anything like that. And uh, yeah, yeah, all all is all is well, all is well. All right, let's see what else we got here. Eric is Eric Garcia is saying, don't judge me, but I'll be using a manual reel mower because I'm holding out for a sorbent electric. That's cool, dude. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, here's the thing: I, I am never going to judge someone with using a manual reel mower. Um, Eric, if you go back to my content like way, 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 way back, many, 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 many moons ago, um, when I first started really getting into working on my lawn and taking it more seriously, I cut this entire lawn, like almost 12,000 square feet, with at first, like the, I think it's a 16 inch, the 16 inch Scott's um, reel mower, and then I upgraded to the 20 inch. So if you go look at some of my really old videos that were absolutely horrible, it cringes me to look at them now, you'll see video of me actually using a manual reel mower. So there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with using a manual reel mower. It's a good way to figure out if it's even for you, if you even like, like wanna commit to, you know, what it takes to really get a good looking lawn using a reel mower. And then the Electra, when it comes out, having an electric one is gonna be pretty cool. So no gas to deal with. I mean, it's supposed to be a really nice unit once they um, once they release it. So yeah, no problem uh, there whatsoever. All right, Tujas Savaka is chiming in. He's got a question here, or more a comment. He says, he just aerated his lawn, laid down some carbonized PN, gonna spray some RGS and Humic 12 Saturday. Nice, I like it, sir. Sounds like you're, I mean, you know, the, the nice thing what I'm hearing is like everything that, you, that you're talking about, literally, is about improving the soil. Like it's either about physically improving the soil or like chemically kind of improving the soil, right? So like the carbonized PN, you got the biochar compost, you're gonna put down some root growth simulator, you got some humic 12. I mean, so overall it's all stuff that's going to, you're like making an investment in the soil which is gonna make your lawn look better, which is always, always cool. So always, always like to hear those, see those kind of, those kinds of comments because like, seriously guys, like the, the, the how quickly my lawn greened up this year is faster than it ever has in the past. And the color at this time of year is better than it's ever been in the past. And the, the thing that's really changed between last year and this year is a lot of things that um, Two Shots of Vaca is talking about. It's just the things, you know, uh, adding soil amendments to help improve the lawn. Granted, the stuff that I'm using is different. I'm using um, the product from Miramichi Green, like the carbon kit. Um, but it just shows you like that, that there is something to do that, to, to investing in improving your soil. All right, very cool. All right, so let's see what other questions we got here. Uh, Kevin D. Jones says, hi, Ron, are you gonna continue the live stream through the spring and summer? I don't know, Kevin, should I? What do you guys think? Should I continue the live stream throughout the spring and summer? I think, if you, so here's the thing, as long as you guys keep watching, I'm gonna keep showing up, so I figure you're still gonna have questions. 
Um, and it's fun. So I, uh, yeah, I, I intend to keep doing it as long as you guys are getting value out of it. If you're not getting value, let me know and I'll, I can do something else. But I, I, I intend to because I think I think you guys enjoy it. Um, it's been growing over time. So, uh, you know, as long as people are, still have questions and need help with their lawns and like more of a live stream type format, I will uh, I'll continue uh, doing that. So, yeah, very, very, very cool. All right, so we have a question here from Matt Alexander. He says, uh, he says, hey, Ron, first time on the live stream. Welcome, Matt. Thank you for just taking some time out of your Friday evening to hang out. He says, this is my first year real mowing my Bermuda. I noticed two brown circles eight inches across as my lawn greens up here in Northwest Arkansas. How to treat uh, slash prevent? So two brown circles eight inches across. Um, it, it, I mean, are they... I mean, I, it could be a lawn fungus, but are they just are they just two small, just two circles in one area, Matt? It's it's kind of hard to say without actually seeing um, a picture of it. I mean, I, I could tell you to go put like a, a fungicide down, but I'd like to. It'd be cool to actually see what what you're talking, what you're dealing with um, more so before you um, before you you know put any kind of chemical on it. On my lawn, a good example. Actually, tomorrow, if you want, I'll take a picture of it and I will post it to Instagram. Um, even though you see my lawn greening up, there are like two spots on my lawn where there are like um, the grass is still dormant. It just it, and it, every year it's been the same thing. Every year, like there's a little like a square, like probably like this big around um, near the rocks that it's it just takes longer to come out of dormancy. I go out there and I've checked it with like a screwdriver, I've checked it with like a um, a uh, like a marking flag, and there's no rocks under there. There's no. I've actually dug last year. I, I didn't do it this year, but last year I actually dug it up when I was looking at it trying to figure out why it wasn't greening up. There wasn't like a grub issue or anything, but that part of the lawn just for some reason that small little section just took longer to green up. So. So um, it could be a fungus. It could be a lawn fungus, but without actually seeing it, I, um, you know, I, it's, I, I'd, I'd hesitate to tell you to, to tell you to put a fungicide down on your lawn at this point. I might give it a little bit longer because if you're in Northwest Arkansas, like you're, you're further north than, um, than I am. So your, your lawn is probably still very much coming out of dormancy. You're not, I, I, I'd really be really surprised if you were fully greened up yet. So I'd say if, um, you know, if you keep coming to the live stream and say, let's say two weeks from now, if those two areas are not improving, like they're not, you know, starting to come out of dormancy and they're not kind of catching up to the rest of the lawn, um, then we might look at consider doing something. But I don't want to. I wouldn't want to tell you to, you know, to go out and, and you know put something like put a put a fungicide on your lawn just yet without knowing, without seeing it first. If you don't mind, send me a picture of what you're dealing with. Um, here's my email address: Ron at golfcourselawn dot com. Send it there. I'll take a look at it and then we can figure out a plan of action. But I don't. I I I, hesit- I want to hesitate to telling you to put any kind of chemicals on your lawn without actually seeing uh, what you're dealing with. Because it could, could just be that the lawn just hasn't, those two areas haven't come out of dormancy yet because, and with my lawn, that's definitely a thing. It's happened with on my lawn. So I, I, you know, I wouldn't be, wouldn't be surprised at all. Great question. Thank you for uh, joining the live stream. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, again, feel free to email me and I will, I'll help you out. All right, let's see what other questions we got here. So as oh, so Karnar has a question about organic chicken feed. He says, can I apply organic chicken feed together along with Carbon Pro G to my lawn to improve the soil? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so if you look at um, if you look at what's in uh, the essential G, some of what in is in that is a chicken manure. It's got like a, it has a it has a, um, a, 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 a Alan likes to call it the smell of success, but it has a, has an odor to it, whereas the Carbon Pro G doesn't have any. Um, so yeah, Osas, you're absolutely fine to put down um, Carbon Pro G, and it's, you're pro- absolutely fine to put down um, uh, chicken feed or along with it if that's what you want to do. Um, not going to hurt anything. That's uh, that's going to be absolutely fine. No no problem whatsoever. Go to town. All right. Other questions we got here. Jeremy White, Mr. Jiu-Jitsu, Mr. IT guy is checking in. He says, big bro, just checking in. Put down two bags of Carbon Pro G today. Let's go. All right. And ma- hopefully when you got your Carbon Pro G, you, you mentioned to site one that you heard about it from a YouTuber uh, and that's why you're in there getting it. So, which is, which is cool, man. I, I'm glad to hear that. Glad to hear that you are uh, doing some stuff to improve your lawn, improve the soil. R. Colson's in the house, 74. What's going on, sir? I know we've been corresponding back and forth, both in chat and on the um, the YouTube comments. So it's good to see you actually in the live stream. I always always get to always cool to see the faces that I hear about or people that I chat with back and forth on the comments and the videos actually in the live stream as well too. Uh, very 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 cool. All right, so we have a question here from DGZ. He says, "What's up, Ron? What's up?" He says, "I have a, a Bermuda lawn and I'm looking into getting a real mower soon. Awesome, I like it." I narrowed it down to a GM 1000 or an Edwin 55. To help the decision, would you recommend renting? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, sure. You you can, yeah, I mean, if you can rent a GM 1000 somewhere, if you can if you can find somewhere that'll actually rent you one, um, yeah, try it out. 
I, I can tell you having having cut with a swordman and having cut with a greens mower, they are they're completely different machines, completely different different balls of wax. So you're really in many ways, even though you're ching, you know, a one thousand or an Edwin fifty five, you're kind of comparing apples and oranges in the sense that the I mean the um, the swordman is going to have is in many ways it does a lot of things really well. Like it's, it does a, has a pretty good quality of cut, and it's a, like a lawn care multi tool that you can put like the um, the de thatcher in it, the verti cutter in it. You got a brush option for it, um, and it does all those things fairly well. The GM1000, as far if, if your only criteria is the absolute best quality of cut, um, nothing is going to beat a greens mower. Like nothing's going to be like a like a like a, like a greens like the greens master 1000. I can tell you, you can put them, you can put it next to the swordman, and the cut is going to be better on the greens master because I've I've cut with great. I'm not cut with a swordman on my lawn, but I've cut with one on the real rollers turf park. And the swordman, I'll tell you, like compared to like say a true cut, the swordman does a better job than a true cut does mainly because it's got that big drum in the back. So as far as like the stripes it lays down and just the the, the cut overall. Um, looks better than what the true cut does, um, but it still doesn't approach what a greens master, what a greens mower does. So if, if it depends on what you're, what you're really, what's important to you. If you want the flexibility of um, being able to have one tool to rule them all, uh, then the Edwin is a better choice. Um, if your only criteria is I want the absolute best cut, um, and I'm also willing to put up with some of the, in, the in, you know, the the I want to say headaches, but some of the things that go along with like. A Greensmaster 1000, um, then it's a good choice. But here's the thing you have to realize too, right? Like those two mowers are at very different price points, and when they break, they're at different price points too, right? So like to, to, I don't know, I have never asked Lee what it costs to get a new reel for a swordman, but I think he told me the bed knife is like twenty or thirty dollars, right? Whereas like a bed knife for a Greensmaster is like a couple hundred bucks, right? A reel for a, for an Edwin, I have no idea what it costs, but a reel for a Greensmaster is close to like three hundred dollars, right? Um, and so it's just everything costs more. So even though you're buying um, a, you know, if you, even though you're buying that GM, that Greensmaster one thousand, probably at a, at a discount, you're maybe buying it for like a thousand, two thousand dollars. Remember that was at one point a ten thousand dollar lawnmower. So the parts for it are priced like a ten thousand dollar lawnmower. You know, I mean, it's like people that go out and buy like used Porsches. Yeah, they're an awesome car, but when they they break, you're going to be paying like new Porsche prices for the parts, right? So it's a, so it's just it's just different. I, so I, I mean, I, I'm trying to give you an explanation to help you realize that. Just simply comparing them and saying one is better than the other, it's not that simple. They're just, they're just different, completely different machines um, with different missions and if, for what they're designed to do, each of them does what they're supposed to do, they're designed to do incredibly well. So hopefully that helps answer your question. You're not gonna be mad with either one. So how's that for an answer? Either, you, either one of them, you're gonna be completely happy with, right? Because they're both gonna do a great job cutting your lawn. All right, uh, let's see what other questions we have here. So Helmut Ruckus, speaking of Porsches, he says, Getting ready to install my Empire Zorge in my backyard. What do you think about laying down a layer of topsoil before because the underground is very sandy or do you recommend anything else? Actually, I would a uh, helmet. Great question. Um, it's not going to hurt to put down a layer of topsoil if you want, but um, even more than that is if you have a site one near you, um, go out and get yourself like, uh, you know, a few bags of Carbon Pro G. And if you don't have a site one near you, um, you can get some Essential G. Now, the reason why I say go to Site One first is that Essential G, the Carbon Pro G is a little bit cheaper because you're not paying for shipping. But I would put something like this down. Let me cut over here. Something like this that is going to, that's going to be really, really rich and help feed the soil. That's got some biochar in it. It's got compost in it. It's got a little bit of silica in it. Um, it's just a really, really, really good product. Um, just like Carbon Pro G. This is like the sister. This is like the sister to Carbon Pro G. I would put something like this down on your lawn. And if you have a site one nearby, you can go get Carbon Pro G, um, either one of those, and you can put them down heavy. So whereas the rate that for Carbon Pro G is something like, um, it's just not one bag will cover 4,000 square feet at the lower, at the high rate, and then 8,000 square feet at the low rate. Like if you're sodding your lawn, you can go, you can go a lot heavier than that. Really the limit is just whatever your, your budget's going to permit. So I, I would go nice and heavy if you're putting it down on your back lawn, because it's going to help with rooting. Because, you know, really before, um, you know, I really started talking about Carbon Pro G a lot. You go and talk to the guys at Site One. The, the time when they really sold it was whenever like high value ornamentals, when people were putting like really expensive trees or uh, or they're doing a really nice lawn that people had the budget for it. That's how Carbon Pro G is often used is to help with rooting. So if you're putting down an Empire Zoysia, it's a big project. It's going to be expensive. Um, you know, you're already paying a bunch of money. You know, it's putting a couple hundred dollars into a product that you can put down before you put the zoysia down. It's going to help with it. is is worthwhile in my opinion. So either Carbon Pro G or the Essential G that I showed you that you can get um, here on the golfcourselawn.store. So go there and check it out if um, 
if you need that. So great question. Congrats on, on going with Zoysia, man. She'd look pretty awesome. Be sure to send me pictures once you, once you get it, once you get it done. All right. So let's see what other questions we have here. Okay. Lawn Journeys, uh, going back to Carbon Pro G, says, I keep reading up that folks are having trouble getting Carbon Pro G out of a spreader. I see comments that it is more on the moist side and have to apply with the spreader gate full open. So Lawn Journeys, that's not been my case, not been my, my, um, my observation. Um, I, I think if people are confusing Carbon Pro G with carbonized PN, because there are, there are like three granular, well not three granular, there, there are three, um, I don't know, not really granular, because two of them are granular, one of them is not granular. Um, there are like, that are like soil type products um, that are like dirt-like, that, that Miramichi Green makes, with a, for lack of a better term of being able to describe it, right? Um, there is carbonized PN, which is like compost and biochar, but it is like in dirt form. It's like in a compost form. So you, you have to use either like a compost spreader or manually broadcast that to get it out on your lawn. Um, and then there are the two granular products or, or that, are in, that are made into prill form, and that's Carbon Pro G and Essential G. Both of those go down just fine in a spreader. Like I have, I've, put, I've probably put down more Carbon Pro, I mean, I, I can't say for sure on this, but I've probably put down more Carbon Pro G, I would say, um, probably than any, surely more than anyone else that I know, more, more than, than most of my viewers for sure. I put down a lot of this stuff on my lawn um, and I've not really had any issues with it, um, with it clumping. And I'm using my Earthway spreader and I don't, I don't run it wide open. I, um, the spreader setting I use on my Earthway is a, spreading, a setting of 23 or 24. Um, and the spreader goes oh, all the way up to 30 and it flows just fine out that, you know, using that. So it's not, um, I mean, I guess if, if if someone got a bag that maybe got wet, I could see that. But I can tell you, I apply a ton of the stuff, um, and both Essential G and Carbon Pro G flow out of a spreader just fine. And, I, and actually, out of the two, Essential G flows a little bit better because the prill is slightly smaller um, in Essential G. But yeah, that, that's not been my experience. And I've again, I put down like a ton of the stuff. So um, I'm not sure what people are experiencing. If you can, let me know if you know what spreader they're using and, and like, let me know that in the comments, uh, you know, further down in the chat, I'll probably get to it here eventually. Um, but yeah, I'd be interested to find out like what, if it's a spreader thing or, or what it is, but for me, that's not been, that's not been the case. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, he says, Robert uh, Baker says, hey Ron, uh, well, Ron <laughs> hey Ron, Rob Baker here from uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, zone eight. Have scalped the lawn. What's the first recommendation of recommended fertilizer and when? Okay, so the best way to answer that question, Robert, um, is to get a soil test done. I mean, you know, if you if you've not if you've not gotten a soil test to where we know like what deficiencies there could possibly be in your lawn, like I could give you a recommendation and it's probably going to be fine. But if you want the most optimal results, um, that really comes from knowing like what deficiencies, if any, there are in your soil. So if you're looking for a soil test, the one I'd recommend is um, this. It's like a from my soil. You can get it at the golf course lawn store. If you don't want to do that, so you're saying, hey, Ron, I don't really want to do a soil test. And I just want to put something down on my lawn. Um, what would you recommend? The two fertilizers that um, that I like, uh, the, the actually, the, the, there's the starter fertilizer. It's a triple 12, which you, can, which you can probably go with as long as your lawn, hopefully your soil doesn't need, um, is not like, like peaking in phosphorus. Um, but then the, the fertilizer that I also like that I'm going to be using this season and that I'm a huge fan of is the Humic Max. And that one I can show you here. We'll cut back over. This is a really good fertilizer that Lebanon Turf makes, that, that Lebanon Turf finally made available for the DIY community. If you know anything about Lebanon Turf, um, primarily they serve the professional and golf course industry. Um, but this fertilizer is a really good one. It's a 1608. Um, and it's got, the nice thing about it is that not only is it a 1608, but it's also got right at 9% humic acid in it. So it's almost like a combination product in that you are both um, feeding your lawn and you're feeding the soil. So this is an excellent product. This is what I'm gonna be using on my lawn this season. And it's, it's again, that's if you, if you want like a great product that's gonna both feed your lawn and feed the soil, that is what I'd recommend to go with. If you're looking for something just to kind of wake the lawn up, uh, the triple 12, this triple 12 is a really good one. Um, I, I recommend this a lot in soil test results because the nice thing about this triple 12 is that you got like all three macros, but it's also got a full micronutrient stack in it too. Cause that's something that's kind of difficult to find a lot of times in a granular fertilizer. A lot of times you have to spray to get your micronutrients, but this has got, um, again, all your, like your, your NPK and it's got all the micronutrients all in one fertilizer. So depending on which, on what you're looking for, what you need, um, one, either one of those two fertilizers will work really well. So if you don't need phosphorus, you don't need a starter fertilizer, get the Humic Max. It's a great product. Again, that's what, it's what I'm using on my lawn. It's an awesome product. Uh, again, Lebanon turf, so you can't go wrong with it. Um, but I would also encourage you 
to get a soil test done so that um, we can figure out like what is the best absolute match for your lawn, for your soil. And, and you can get all three of those products, the soil test, the starter fertilizer, or Humic Max at the golf course lawn store. All those are available um, available there. And once you get your soil test done, if you decide to go ahead and do that, feel free to send me an email here, ron at golfcourselawn.com, if you have any questions about what the results say or how to like what you what you need to um, do based on those, feel free to reach out to me and I'll help you out as best I can. Great, great question. But yeah, you being in Wilmington, North Carolina, you're, pro you're probably a little bit um, b behind us by, by a touch, but it, you should be greening up here fairly soon. So you're getting to the point where you can start looking at putting a fertilizer on your lawn. So hopefully, hopefully that helps. All right, uh, R. Colson has a question about mowers. He says, I'm curious, why did you go with a Jeans Master over a John Deere unit? Mm. Great question. You guys see I'm using, uh, I'm doing pink lemonade tonight. Actually, it's strawberry lemonade. That's why it's pink. Um, so the reason why I went with the GM, with the Green M's Master, the GM over the Toro over the John Deere, a couple reasons. One, I asked um, a couple people that I know that actually work on golf courses. I said, "What do you? I mean, you got yes, you've cut with the Toro, you've cut with Jacobson's, you've cut with um, the the John Deere. Which one do you like best?" And they say, "Well," and the two people that I know that personally, and I asked this question to, they said they like the way the Toro cuts better. And the um, the big compelling reason they said is even though the, the John Deere is also good, like honestly, you're splitting hairs is kind of a preference thing. But the big thing is that with a with the Toro, the axles, like the axles that the transport wheels go on, are removable. So for a home lawn, that is that's kind of a big deal. I mean, I'd really I never take mine off. But if you ever wanted to, like say um, R. Colson, if you had like um, like a bed, like a flower bed you wanted to mow next to, or like you had rocks or something like that. Anything, anyone you want to kind of ease up closer to a fence line or something like that. Uh, you're not going to easily be able to do that with the John Deere because the, to my knowledge, the axles are not removable. You just, yes, you have to cut them off if you wanted to get rid of them. Like you, there's not a way to remove them and put them back on. Whereas the Toro, they can be removed. Um, so that's, that's one of the bigger reasons why. Also in this area, when I was doing my research, there's a couple of places here that work on Toros. So like you have Jerry Pate, who's like a Toro dealer. They will, you know, as far as like, I need to get my baby all fixed up and, um, you know, all cherried up after I go and mess it up. Uh, I've got a place that I can take it to that that knows exactly, definitely knows what they're doing. I mean, there's other places that know what they're doing too. I'm not saying that Jerry Pace is the only place that knows what they're doing, but they, they, as far as like having a place that's gonna be used all Toro parts, um, that knows all the tolerances, has the right grinding machine to make sure everything is done just exactly right. Uh, there's that in this area, there's more support for Toro, it seems, than for John Deere. So in my case, that's why I made that decision. Depending on where you are, um, that might not be the case. It might be, you might be in John Deere country. And in that case, you know, John Deere would be the right one to go with. But for where I am in the Southeast United States, um, the Toro is a better fit for me. And I, and I love the way it cuts. Some, someday I need to find someone that has a JD that will let me borrow it or will bring it over. And I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll do like a side, a side to side by side, you know, Toro versus John Deere. And what you're probably going to find is from a cutting standpoint, they're going to be equivalent. They're probably going to be just fine. So hopefully that helps. Um, and uh, great question, sir. Great, great question. All right, let's say, let's see what we got here. So Tamika, Tamara uh, Kamiko says, uh, what is applied first to your lawn, weed and feed or malorganite? Okay, um, great question, Tamara. Um, so I, I'm depending on um, depending on what's going on with your lawn, uh, I, if you had to ask me out of the two, I would quickly say malorganite more so than weed and feed because I'm not I'm not a huge fan of putting of like blanketing the lawn with um, with weed and feed unless you've got like a serious like weed outbreak all over the place that you're trying to control. Because remember, the, the weed and feed, uh, Tamara has two components. There's like a, the fertilizer part of it, and there's the herbicide part of it. Um, and even though that weed and feed on the bag is gonna say, you know, safe for warm season lawns or safe for whatever your grass type is, right? Um, even though the herbicide that they use is still is technically safe, it's still going to stress the grass, right? It's still going to, um, to stress it. So unless there's a reason that you've got going in your lawn where your lawn is like just infested with weeds and you're trying to really get them under control, um, I would opt for doing malorganite out of the two. Um, really, uh, kind of like the question, the answer I, I gave the, uh, the the other gentleman earlier about um, getting a soil test, really getting a soil test done is a, is a good idea. It's, I mean, these guys are super easy to use. I mean, that's why I like them. They're super easy to use. The results are super easy to, to read. Um, and that's going to tell you exactly what your soil needs. In addition to fertilizer, you might you might be um, you know no, based on what's going on with your soil, you might need to add some lime to it. So getting a soil test is a good idea. Of the two, if you're gonna if you're gonna put me in the corner, and says Ron, I just you have to answer the question. I want one of those two. I'm gonna opt more for malorganite um, without even seeing your lawn because I'm not a huge fan of weed and feed. I don't like the idea of people people putting 
like blanketing their lawns with um, with herbicide um, just just because if that if that makes sense. So um, if you're if you are going to use a weed and feed, here's the thing: I would um, I would do it like when the lawn is fully out of dormancy. I wouldn't even do it right now because another thing you have to think about too is like if you, I'm answering this question, Tamara, as if you were my neighbor, if you're like in the southeast United States, right? So when the lawn is is transitioning out of being brown or being dormant to being fully green, it's more like it's more sensitive to being hit with herbicides. So even if you put that, that weed feed down on it, even though, yeah, it's got fertilizer in it, you could actually, you know, hurt or delay how long it takes your lawn to go to become fully green. So if you are gonna use the weed and feed, I would wait until the lawn is fully greened up. And then if you wanna do like a weed and feed application because your lawn's got tons of weeds in it, I would do it then. I wouldn't do it like right now when the lawn is transitioning. Out, out of those two, um, I would choose Melorganite if that helps. So great question. And um, and hopefully I can also, also convince you to get a soil test uh, done as well because then I'll be able to give you a better answer in addition to just fertilizer, what you should be doing to your lawn. But great, great, great question. All right. Let's see what other questions we got here. So Eric, uh, how do I pronounce your last name, sir? Eric Kishwanis says, I'm in Georgia too. So if you want more content and want to come out and help me get my lawn in order in, in tip top shape, um, hit me up. Um, Eric Kishwanis at, at gmail.com. I have a mess. Um, uh, you know, it's, tell you what, uh, Eric, uh, send me pictures. Why don't you send me pictures of your lawn and I'll, I'll see what I can do to help you out. I'll send you like an email or, or, or tell you like what I would recommend to help you fix your lawn, to help you been moving in the right direction. But with as much stuff as I got going on now between work and the course and everything else, it's it's going to be hard to take on another fix my ugly lawn project like what I did with Alex's lawn. A, big, a huge convenience of Alex's lawn is that he was right next door, right? So, but doing another one would be kind of challenging. I mean, I'm not saying it's I'm not ruling it out completely. Um, I, I've I actually toyed around with the idea of doing like you know lawn trips or lawn visits to people that are in the Georgia area, at least that are somewhere nearby me, just to kind of see and film some content and you know, just see what's, what's going on with their lawn, kind of a lawn intervention. Yeah, I think it'd be kind of cool, um, but it wouldn't be a full like thing like you saw in the Fix My Ugly Lawn series uh, last year with Alex. But great question. Thank you for chiming in in the live stream, sir. All right. So Elliot Anders says, hey, Ron, what's going on, man? Good to see you. Good to see you too. He says, I ordered some Humic 12 for the lawn and I plan to throw down next week when the war weather gets warmer. Yes, I have a lawn bug that bad. That's a good idea, man. I mean, that's the one thing, that's the one thing, Elliot, um, uh, is that you know, whenever you, uh, if you want something that you can pretty much apply to your lawn pretty much at any time and it's not gonna really hurt things, like anything that helps improve the soil, like, you know, again, like Carbon Pro G, Essential G, in your case, Humic 12, like any of those products will are, are pretty much apply whenever you want. You know, there's not really a, uh, a negative to that. So I, I totally get that it's an easy way and a safe way for your lawn and soil to scratch that that lawn itch. All right, so the questions we got here. And while, and while I take a, to get through for the next question, we are on the top of the hour. If you guys are, we are we 100 people in the live stream, if you guys wouldn't mind, touch that like button ever so gently for me. It's free for you guys to do. Sends nice vibes to the YouTube algorithm. Let's them know that we are having a great time here and hopefully we'll send more people our way. Mm-hmm. All right. Our next question is from Michael Tucker. He says, where's a good place to look for a Greens Master for sale? So great question, um, Michael. So there's a couple different ways you can find one. You can look on um, Facebook Marketplace. Offer up um, is decent. Uh, there's the weeks option, a weeks auction. There's an auction that you can uh, you can go and bid on mowers. Those ones tend to be a little bit rougher though, because a lot of times they'll be sometimes they'll be sitting outside, um, but you tend to get a better deal. Like you you pay a little bit less for those. So Facebook mar Marketplace offer up the weeks au auction. Those are um, those are good options for finding one. Um, yeah, and that that's that's what I would do. I mean there are there are more like um, more higher end options. Like if you go look at um, Prairie Turf. Um, equipment. There's a place out of like Manitoba, Canada. Like, yeah, they're in Canada, um, and they they deal in very nice greens masters. Like, if you wanted to get a, like a very very like low hours nice unit, you can pay a little bit more for it. Um, you could hit you could hit them up. Um, but as far as like something to find locally, again, I'm, I'm answering this question as if you're in the Georgia area. Um, you know, the Weeks Auction or again or Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist or OfferUp. Just look around there and see if anybody has one for sale. Uh, that you can use and make sure that if you get one, find out find out what the service history on it's been like. If they like the last time it's been sharpened, um, like when it's been maintained, because if you buy a used mower um, and they can't tell you like when it was last taken in, you you're also you want to budget like you know 100, 150 bucks to um, to getting that done, to getting the you know the reel and bed knife sharp and everything all all you know done up and making sure the mower is good to go for cutting. So just keep that in mind. Any price you see on a used mower. Add, well, just to be safe, add 200 to that just for a full service, you know, maybe small, slight um, replacements, parts replacements, and just getting it ready to cut. So just something to keep in mind. Great, great question. 
All right, let's see what we have here. There's a question from Kevin Sheehan about the carbon keys. This question, the but the car, the five K carbon kit mix it uh, mix it eight ounce of each to four gallons. Yes, that's correct. Um, a four gallons of water. Spray four gallons on four thousand square feet. Then the five K package actually covers six thousand square feet. Uh, right? Yes, that's actually true. Um, uh, Kevin, but it'll cover 6,000 square feet one time. So if you read the uh, the instructions, what Kevin's talking about is the carbon the carbon kit that is also on the golf course lawn store. So if you take a look at this, what he's referring to is this kit that, that I put together along with Miramichi Green that contains three products. I'm gonna take your take your, your message here for a second, uh, Kevin. It's three products. So you have Release Zero, which is micronized carbon, Nutri-Kelp, and then Biospectrum, which is a microbial package. Um, the, it comes in two packages, one for a 5,000 square foot lawn, and then one for a 10,000 square foot lawn, is what he's talking about. And it's three applications at 5,000 square feet, um, uh, Kevin. So if you buy the 5,000 square foot package, yeah, you could you could technically apply it all on a 16,000 square foot lawn if you want it once. But the, the reason why it's broken up that way and why it's designated as 5,000 square feet is that you'd be able to apply it in April, May, and June. So you'd have like three applications of it, or you get the 10,000 square foot one, and if you also have a 5,000 square foot lawn, you could do six applications of it. So it just depends on size of your lawn and how many applications per year you wanna do. Um, I knew that three was the minimum that I really wanted everyone to be able to put on their lawn to start seeing some really nice results, which is why the kit is priced this way and why it's put together this way. So, um, but great question. Great, great, great question. So yeah, but you are you are correct, sir. Um, it does cover, like by the by the book, by the numbers, it the liquids, the nutri kelp, and the release zero um, will cover up to six, well, up to sixteen thousand square feet. Yes, that's absolutely correct. But remember, it's designed to be broken up into three monthly into three applications. But uh, if you have any other questions, uh, let me know. Great observation. All right, let's see what other questions we have here. So Eric Newton says, Ron, Ron, what's up? What's going on, Eric? Says I scalped here in Central North Carolina a week ago. All right, last night was in the twenties. Tonight is going to be in the twenties. Should I be concerned? No, I wouldn't. I won't be too concerned about it, man. He says I scalp to the soil. Uh, no, not really. I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry too much about it, man. Because if you guys are like how Georgia is, yes, it was cold the last couple of nights, um, but it's going to be warming up. Starting tomorrow, it's going to warm up, and it's going to be warm. Um, you know, for you know, the, for at least for the next ten days, anyway. If the weather forecast is to be believed, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry about it uh, too much, Eric. You're gonna. Your lawn's gonna be just fine, especially if you got. I'm, you can say what you have, but I'm assuming it's Bermuda, like. Even when you want to hurt or kill Bermuda, it's really hard to do. It's incredibly hard to do. So I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't worry about it too much. You're not going to have, you're not going to have a problem at all. Uh, just get out there and mow it once it grows back a little bit. So uh, yeah, no, no worries there whatsoever. All right, yeah. And Saul says, yeah, thanks for the recommendation. I have a Bermuda lawn and live in Charlotte, North Carolina. Cool, very, very, very cool. All right, let's see what other questions we have here. So Jeremy White says, uh, Big Bro, I have a question. I have a friend that moved into a house uh, two to three months ago with new sod. Should he scalp it? Um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily do that, man. It's a little, it's, it's brand new. It's early. And here's the thing to also keep in mind, guys. Scalping is not like a chapter out of the Bible. It's not something that, that thou must do. Thou shalt scalp your lawn in the spring. It's not something that you must do to get a good result, um, in your lawn. There's people that never scalp their lawn and have really good looking lawns. Um, but the, 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 the idea behind scalping is to, um, if your lawn has grown taller, it's gotten like thicker over the, over the, in the fall, you let it grow out, which I don't know with mine, but if you let it get really tall and you want to open up the canopy and let more sun heat get down to the soil to kind of improve that green up by a couple of weeks, um, and also remove a lot of that dead top material, that's the benefit. Those are some of the benefits of scalping. So for a, a new lawn that was just put in with that's new sod, you're not going to really have thatch to deal with. The grass is not going to be really tall. So there's really not any reason to scalp it. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't. If I were your friend, I would just tell your friend just to mow it. I mean, if it's it, two to three months ago, it should hopefully be rooting by now. Um, but yeah, once it starts greening up, just start mowing it. And if he wants it to green up even sooner, just start mowing it. Like mow your lawn. The more the more he mows it, uh, the better the better it's going to look. So I wouldn't. I definitely I wouldn't scalp new side because there's just really really no real reason uh, to do that. So great question and good 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 on you for getting in the live stream, uh, Jeremy, and helping your neighbor out. Asking you know putting a question in there for him, saying, hey man, I got you. I know the guy can help you out. And give you uh, an answer to this. So, uh, so yeah, good on you for that. All right, let's see what other questions we have here. All right, so Timothy Smith says, "Hey, Ron, great work as always. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. Appreciate the support." He says, "I went to Real Rollers and bought a True Cut. Nice." He says, "Lee and Andrew are awesome. That they are. This is a great experience, and I know uh, the secret. I know the secret. My lips are sealed. Going to pick it up Monday. Very, very cool. You know the secret, and your lips are sealed, huh? Okay, all right. Well, keep it, keep it a secret then. Um, but yeah, you are right. The, 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 if anything else, I mean, the guys at Real Rollers, like the the facility that they put together is really cool. Like, how how often can you go and find like 
you know, a Bermuda lawn and then two types of zoysia and then a bunch of different um, real mowers. I mean, they have, they've got pretty much, they've got a lot of different options, at least all the homeowner options. And I think that they're working on getting a greens mower at some point too. So you'll have that just to be able to do a comparison. So um, it's a really cool facility. The guys that work there are really, like, you know, really quality people. And you can tell they really enjoy it. And um, I'm glad you got your true cut there. I'm sure uh, you got a good deal on it. And hopefully you got your roller, a roller with it too. What did you go with, Timothy? Did you go with a smooth roller? Or did you go with a grooved roller? Um, you know, so I'd be interested in hearing about that. But yeah, I'm glad that you, you went there and you had a good result and that they, uh, the guys treated you well and helped you out. So it's always... Always, always good to hear. Always good to hear. And and anyone that's registered, if you guys have not gone to, what is it, retirederotary.com, go check that out because Real Rollers is, is running a giveaway where they're going to give away two mowers. They're giving away a True Cut and they're giving away a Swordman. They're both pretty baller. They're both, they both look, they're both pretty sweet. So, you know, for win a free mower, can't beat that. To go to retirederotary.com, register to win one. I think they're doing it um, in May, I believe. Uh, so yeah, just check that out. All right. Let's see what other questions we got here. Uh, Daryl says, hey, Ron, you're the man of words. Hey, views, please send photos of your Ron Henry merch to support the live stream if you don't mind. It'll be fun. Yeah, we'll see, man. If people want to send me pictures of their merch, they can. Also, as, where, as far as where you can get the merch, I actually fixed this this week so people can actually can get to it. If you want to have your own, very own Sunlight Soil and Stripe Action t-shirt or the Stripe Action shirt that um, Daryl had, you can go to youtube.com forward slash Ron Henry forward slash store. All my merch is there. It's kind of hard. You have to point to the opposite side of where it is on the screen. You go right here, and that is where um, my merch, hats, everything else um, you can find. Speaking about cool hats, guys, not to go off on a tangent, but like, look at this really clean hat that a viewer sent to me. Um, Josh Habib, really, really nice of him to do this. He sent me this hat with the uh, with the leather on the front. Get that leather on Henry on the front if I can get to focus. Um, and this is really really sweet man thank you so much josh i really appreciate this. this is a really cool hat i might even see about getting some of these made up but it's really really cool nice of him to do that but um yeah if you want some cool merch uh go check out the store there all right so who's got in the house here cheryl what's going on cheryl thanks for thanks for coming and hang out cheryl is one of the diehards man always uh always in the channel always on i'm watching the video so i'm glad to see that you're you're in the live stream tonight all right see what the questions we have here so timothy smith says um Applying the carbon kit on tomorrow, should I, can I, or should I add uh, chelated iron? My lawn is greening up nicely, thanks to your guidance. My neighbors are amazed. Uh, you can. The, the nice the nice thing about the carbon kit, Timothy, is that I've mixed, I've not tried mixing it. I'm not sure what chelated I, pro, iron product you're using, um, but I've mixed it with a lot of different things. I, I've, t I've tested it with like Brand Supreme Green. I've tested it with Turflex. I've tested it with like the Nutrizolve, which is another product from BioPro. I've tested it with another one of their fertilizers, the Bloomplex. I've done like a couple of different co um, concoctions. I've mixed it with PGR just to see where it would fall apart, to see if there's any time where I'm gonna get like clumping or any kind of misbehavior or something that's gonna cause a problem for you guys when you're trying to apply it to your lawn. And nothing is never, it's like everything always mixes together really beautifully and just goes down really nicely. So yeah, I, I'm not, I don't know what chelated iron product you're using, but if the testing I've been doing with all the other products is an indicator of what you can expect, you should be able to, to mix um, you know, that chelated iron with it um, and, and go ahead and put it down with no problem whatsoever. And I'm glad to hear that your lawn's doing well and that your neighbors are amazed with it. And be sure, not, now you, you know the secret, be sure to help your neighbors out. Give them some tips, help them improve their lawn. Don't just keep it all for yourself. It's not, I mean, I'm all about you know dominating lawns is nice, but you know also help your neighbor get their lawn looking nice too. It helps everybody, right? All right, so the questions we got here. Uh, yeah, Karen, you're very welcome about answering your question. Uh, let's see, let's see what other questions we have here. Um, Rush Johnson says, let's see, is now a good time to apply a fungicide as a, pre as a preventative since daytime temperatures are beginning to increase while nighttime temps are relatively cool? So this is a good question, Russ. Um, if you've had issues with fungus on your lawn around this time of year, yeah. Um, but the, the if you if you listen if you talk to the folks at Syngenta and you ask them like when is the optimal time um, generally to apply a um, a fungicide for to, to take care of, for, for the broadest control is in the months of like mid May to June. Like in May May to June are the are the are the sweet spots. And now if you've had issues with lawn fungus on your lawn this time of year, then by all means feel free to uh, then then go go ahead and go for it. But as far as being able to to say that you know you the best time to get the most out of your preventative now would not be the time that I would I would recommend doing that if that makes sense. So 
Hopefully that helps. Um, again, it's, the, the answers are quite, the question is kind of difficult to answer. If you've not had an issue with fungus in the past, I wouldn't necessarily put it down just yet. Um, I might wait till the end of the month at the earliest. Um, but if you have, then apply a fungicide. So, but as a preventative, I would give it, I would give it till this time next month at the, uh, at the earliest. Great, great question. All right. Let's see what else we have here. Um, Stan G's in the house. What's going on, Stan? Thanks for coming to hang out. And other questions we got here is Kevin Sheehan. He's talking about uh, Greens, uh, Greens Master Flex. He says, Greens Master Flex 2100, is that a 21 inch cut? And what's your feelings on the flex? You know, that's a good question. You know, I don't know a ton about the flexes, Kevin. I don't know if the 2100 um, actually corresponds to the cutting width, if that's actually the cutting width of the, um, of the mower. I don't know how wide it actually is. That's a good question. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Um, on the flex, I don't know for sure. I've never used one to know how well they cut. I, I imagine they do really well because they can ride any little contours in on your lawn, um, you know, better than like a, a fixed, a fixed head unit will be able to. So it just depends on, on what you're going for. If you can get a flex at a good price, then by all means go for it. I know that Brett, um, Brett Grascapades, I think he had a solid one, a solid, um, uh, like a fixed head one, kind of like with mine, like a 1600. And then um, because he, when he did his, his Bermuda, it was a little bit more bumpy than he wanted to, and he's not really going to top dress it just yet. He picked up a flex unit and is doing a better job cutting his lawn. So for uneven surfaces, uh, a flex is a good option. And um, for what I understand with the flex too, a ni one nice benefit is when you want to get it worked on, you want to get the, the cutting head sharpened, you can remove the cutting head off the flex um, and take that out and just send that out just, just to get that um, uh, worked on. You have to take the entire mower out. So it's kind of, that's kind of a nice benefit of, um, of that as well. All right. All right, let's see. Um, let's see what else we have going on here. In the live stream, what other questions we got? Uh, da, 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 da. Trying to, okay, let's see, let's see what we got here. All right, um, next up is um, the, yeah, so, so Lawn Journeys is saying, yeah, the liquid moss product from, I guess from Home Depot, moss out concentrate, that is an option. So yeah, if you're looking for one, if you're looking for one for the gentleman that asked earlier about it, that's a good option for you as far as, as, far as a liquid moss option that you can apply uh, to your lawn. I'm looking for a super chat here uh, that I got because I don't want to um, miss, I don't want to miss it here. All right. And all right, perfect. All right. So I'll, I'll, I'll just dig it up. All right. So next, see, next we have here is Dimitri. He says, hey, I'm picking up all these plugs uh, right now and blaring your live stream on the phone. I know where my neighbors think I'm nuts. See, that's the thing I don't get. I don't, I, 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 I'm sure I am wrong with this on some level, but every time I aerate my lawn, I never pick up plugs, um, Dimitri. I never have. I've n I literally have aerated my lawn every year for the past five years, and not once have I ever picked up the plugs um, on my lawn. I just, I just, I've just never really seen the point of doing it. Like, I guess for a golf green, yeah, um, but like, it's one, it's just extra work, and then they're, you know, once they dry out, they're gonna break down anyway. So I just, I've never, I've never really seen the need or the re or reason, um, reason to do that. But um, but yeah, if you but it sounds like I'm glad you're that I am keeping you company that you're that you're listening to me in the live stream or watch listening to this while you're at it. Um, and if, if you don't if you don't mind, it'd be interesting to find out how much like how much comes out of a lawn. If you don't mind, Dimitri, I know you're probably busy, but when if you before you throw them all out, um, send me an email with a picture of like the the amount of plugs that came out of your lawn, like the pile that came out of your lawn, and let me know how big the square footage is. I'd be interested in knowing just like how much how much material you actually comes out of your lawn when you pick up plugs. All right. Let's see what other uh, questions we got here. Uh, da, 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 da. So um, Greg Lyons says, tiger, tiger stripes. I'm trying to get rid of them using a bow rake, but they are all tough to remove and, and hope to mow them up tomorrow. Any better methods to move them when they're caked in? Thanks. Yes, Greg. So, and I, I wish I knew the, uh, the viewer's last name, but when I first posted that video about um, tiger stripes on my lawn, when I got the really super heavy rain, it turned into a lake. Um, what I did, what, what a viewer suggested to me was using a leveling rake, and I never thought to do that. So normally I've used, I, I've taken like a big heavy shop broom. That works pretty well. You can use that to kind of broom them and break them up. That works all right. But like, believe it or not, a leveling rake works really well. Like even for the ones that are a little bit kind of get, like how best way to describe it, they kind of get, they kind of get sunken into the surface a little bit. Like that leveling rake has no problem like breaking those out and, and kind of like doing almost like a light, like a light top dressing almost on the lawn uh, whenever you uh, whenever you do that, so yeah, it's um, 
it's yeah, that's that's what I would recommend. Uh, either a shot broom, I've done that. But if you have your hands, if you can get your hands on a leveling rake, that will do a, actually a really really good job um, as far one breaking them up and then also just spreading them out and creating a nice almost like a, again like a light top dressing on the lawn. Great stuff, great stuff, great stuff. All right, um, stripped gears says he's talking about soil test results. My soil test has a, a pH of 5.0, ooh, and high phosphorus. At, and you're at a loss. So we're gonna to wanna to do something to bring that up, um, Stripped Gear. If you don't mind, send me an email here, ron at golfcourselawn.com with your soil test results. I'll take a look at it for you. Um, and what what we're probably gonna to have to use is a lime of some sort, right? So the choice between um, whether you need, to, you need to apply a calcitic lime or a dolomitic lime is based on, on the magnesium. And that's why I wanna see what your soil test results look like. Um, so to tell you which, you know, what, which of those two I would recommend to start trying to move uh, your pH in the right direction. But great, great, great question, sir. Uh, great question. All right, let's see what else we got We got going on here. Uh, Playmate in Miami is talk, is hanging out. It says, what's going on? What's going on, Mr. Um, Mr. Ron? What's going on, Playmate in Miami? Thanks for coming and hanging out. I appreciate it. And uh, let's see what else what we got going on here. Yeah, so um, Suburbia Dad, Moss follow-up. He says, shade, yep, shade, pH, and moisture. It's spotty, but it's there. I've used Moss X, so I'll keep using that as needed or take a hose sprayer to it. Yeah, and if there's anything you can do, a Suburbia Dad, to try and, um, you know, to try and, and if you can, like, improve drainage in that area where the um, where the Moss is and also anything you can do to also bring raise pH. You said that your pH, you said that it is an issue, so I'm, get, I'm assuming it's low. Um, you know, maybe getting some lime down to try and help correct the the condition, correct the pH to where we're creating conditions that's harder for the moss to do well. Um, those are all things I would um, I'd consider doing. But good. Um, thanks, thanks for chiming in, man. And let me know um, that what you've tried and what's worked. And I, I, if it were me, yeah, use the moss ex. But I would also um, again work on those things you talk about: the shade, the pH, and then also moisture drainage. So let's, let's try and create a hostile environment for the moss so that you uh, you know you don't have to deal with it as much anymore. All right, let's see what other app, what other uh, questions we got here. Uh, Grace Ortiz in the house. Hey, Grace, what's going on? Thanks for coming and hanging out in the live stream. Hopefully, you're doing well. Normally, you're in early, but I'm glad that you that you're you're hanging out tonight with us. And then uh, Vitaly Yurchenko has a question again. A cold a question about cold in Georgia. Any chance this cold front in Georgia will hurt our lawns? Very unlikely, Vitaly. Uh, very very unlikely. Your lawn's probably going to be just fine because the cold front essentially around here is going to end tonight. And then you're going to be fine, um, you know, going forward uh, after going forward after this. So yeah, no, uh, no worries whatsoever. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about your lawn whatsoever. All right, let's see what other questions we got here. Playmate Miami has Alex used the Swordman. Um, no, not really. I think he, I think he made no. He didn't. He didn't actually use it. I was going to um, when I was using it to um, to thin out my lawn to you to do the scarifying. He um, he was just sat there and watched it, but he didn't even make a pass with it. So he's actually never really used the swordman at all. So no, not not really. And, and I've never cut, used it to cut on my lawn. So I've only used it used the scarification package. So uh, so yeah, but no, he didn't get to use it. Um, we might change that. Maybe if I can maybe if I can beg and plead with Lee that whenever I borrow it, um, if I can borrow it again, hopefully to verticut the lawn. Um, maybe maybe I can see if he'll let me borrow a uh, a cutting head to do some cutting with it. We'll see. Maybe maybe Lee, if you're watching. Make, let's, can we make it happen? Um, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll talk with him and see what he's willing to do. All right. Let's see what we got here. So yeah. So Michael Harmer says, when I said bare spots, I mean the previous owner used to park his truck in the grass. So I have about a 20 foot uh, square foot area that there's no grass anymore. My Bermuda might fill in, but I don't know. It, it will, um, Michael. So what you can do is so if you, as long as no one's parking a truck there anymore, which it sounds like you're not doing that, uh, something we can do to help speed that up. Not quite yet because it's not, um, the lawn's not growing probably quite as, as um, the heat's not quite here as yet to help to make this work is get yourself a plugger, like get yourself a plugger and, and, and add plugs to the parts of the lawn. Um, so take some plugs away from like where the grass is growing really well and add some to these bare spots. And that's also going to help it. Um, you're actually creating little islands that will kind of help the grass begin to grow and smooth out and, and, and grow out in that area. So um, that that is what I would do. And then just start mowing it. Like with Bermuda, literally, the shorter you keep it, the shorter you mow it, you're really going to be stimulating it to begin growing laterally. You're going to really create help start getting that that uh, that fill in. So um, that that's what I would recommend doing, sir. But yeah, great question. And I, I, knew, there, I knew that'd be more of a story, but and yeah, parking your truck, that would, that would definitely qualify for the shade problem. So since we don't have that anymore, uh, the Bermuda should grow, uh, grow in there pretty well, especially if the rest of the lawn looks nice or is growing well, 
that area should do all right too once we're once we eliminate the shade. And it sounds like we have. So great, uh, great question. All right, Don Luna says, have you ever had a nuts edge problem? Yes, Don. Actually, as far as the as far as the weed that I um like as long as I've been doing this uh on my lawn that has been like the a common thing has been nuts edge. Um and it's always in the areas like if you have been, I'm not sure if you want how much of my videos you've been watching, but there's like a swale, like a little dip area between Alex's lawn and my lawn, that little that little ravine area where water runs after uh, rain, like that's where the drainage uh, is for the lawn. Like like uh, Nuts Edge just loves, it loves water, loves damp areas. Um, and because that area tends to get, really get more running water and water will actually stay there for a little while, Nuts Edge tends to grow in there quite a bit. So both on, in the swale area, and also in on the right side of the lawn where the, the you guys don't hardly ever see that, but the right side of the, of the lawn also has a drainage path there too. A little bit, a little bit of nuts edge grows there. Like a little tuft grows in this one spot pretty much every year. And I just go out there with a little bit of image and and get and blast it. And then it's, then we're done for the year. So um, yeah, that's what I can use. And as far as options you can use, you can use image. You can use um, a product from Ortho. That one works faster than Image does, but it's going to discolor your grass. Or at least every time Alex and I have tested it, it's done that to our lawn. It creates, it, I'm not sure why, but it, it, it definitely kills a nuts edge. It kills it, you start to notice the nuts edge dying off pretty quickly, but um, it also turns the, the Bermuda a little bit orange in the area, the surrounding grass in the area. So something to consider if you don't want your grass to turn orange, um, don't use that one and use nuts edge if you, I'm uh, sorry, use um, Image um, if you're more patient and you want something that's gonna work, but it's a little bit slower to work. Uh, great question. And then the question you're asking me now, what is my height of cut currently? Currently my height of cut is set to, is that half an inch um, is, or I should say this, on the Greens Master, it's set to a bench height of half an inch. On the um, the True Cut, which I'm using now, it's just slightly under that. It's just slightly lower uh, than half an inch what the True Cut is set to. It, the True Cut is pretty much set to the same height that I used um, when I first scalped the lawn. So, so, I, so it's, it's, a, it's, around, it's in the same area, which is just slightly below uh, the Greens Master. So when I get the Greens Master back, I will either leave it at half an inch and just keep cutting it there, or I might lower it, you know, five thousandths and just see how the lawn looks. We'll, we'll see. I haven't really decided yet um, once it comes back what which I'm gonna go with, um, but I'm just, I'm at half an inch. That, in that zone is where I'm at, uh, Don. Um, we'll see if we'll be able to maintain it because half an inch sounds good. It looks good. It looks it looks amazing. But uh, we'll see when summer heat gets here if PGR is going to be enough to kind of keep the lawn um, nice. You know, if not, it's not going to grow too crazily. So we'll see. All right. Other questions we got here. Um, Timothy Wolf says, "Hey Ron, I'm going to use uh, my 1608 as my main fertilizer and add Milo into it. How can I make sure that I don't overdo it? Not sure about the ratios." Uh, so here's the thing, uh, Timothy. So if you're using the 1608 and you're applying it at the three pounds per thousand rate, you're, you're putting down half a pound of nitrogen on your lawn, um, per month, which is not, not, not a ton. You know, that's, that's a good, a good number, a good safe number. Um, so for Milo, if you're going to add Milo on top of that, you really can't put Milo down at rate. Um, you need it. You have to go light on it. Um, Tell you what, what I'm gonna do, Timothy, is I can't I can't do the math over on my head um, right here on the live stream to tell you like how many pounds of Milo per thousand. But if you don't mind, send me an email here, Ron at golfcourselawn.com. Say, hey, Ron, this is the Milo and sixteen and the uh, Humic Max question, and I'll work it out and I'll tell you what I would do um, as far as like mixing those two if, you, if that's what you want to do. Uh, so yeah, yeah, but I, I can't get I, as far you can pull it off of both of them because the Humic Max rate is is fairly low, but you just have to go fairly light on the Milo. You're not gonna be able to go full rate on Milo because it's gonna be too much nitrogen for your lawn. Uh, but great question. Great, great, great question. All right, uh, let's see what other questions here we got here. LG is chiming in. Thank you, LG. It says moss, a moss out is a liquid moss killer. Two to three ounces of ferrous sulfate mixed with water can be sprayed. If you're desperate, dish soap and water will kill moss, but I agree with Ron, find the source for a straight. There you go, thank you so much, LG. I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, you can, to me, again, if my, my methodology or my way of looking at, of using herbicides is that you use herbicides as a means to like, to knock down a temper, a problem that your hope is going to be temporary and to get ahead of it. Right. So in the case of like, um, you know, the, the Tamara went earlier, she asked about using the weed and feed. If your lawn has got a lot of weeds in it, 
um, and you, you're committing this year, I'm going to really start mowing more regularly. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to put a weed and feed down to knock the weeds back and kind of like you know give the weeds a hard time and allow the, the grass to grow, and then you're going to start cutting it a lot, then sure, that's um you know it's fine with that. But you don't, I don't, you don't want to get to the point where every month you're spraying some kind of herbicide on your lawn because you really, if you're if you're cutting your lawn like you should be, um, and you're also focusing on creating good soil, it shouldn't you shouldn't have to do that. Like again, with my lawn, literally outside of. Um, spring pre-emergent and fall pre-emergent, I don't really, I, I, can't, I don't have to put stuff on my lawn. I don't put any herbicides on my lawn anyway. It is just very, really, really have to do that. Um, so I'd encourage you, uh, if you, if you can, just to try and figure, fix the air, fix the things you've already identified, the pH, the drainage, and the shade, and then use moss out, and hopefully that'll knock it back for, uh, for good this time. Great question. Hey, Vera, what's going on? Thank you so much for hanging out in the live stream. I appreciate it. And then uh, you have a question here. He says, you plan on putting out pre-emergent once our soil temps warm up in upstate New York. Sounds like a good plan, Vera. I mean, don't wait too long. Um, remember, when it comes to pre-emergent, a little bit earlier is better than a little bit late. Um, you want to get it down before uh, soil temps get um, above 50 to 55 degrees. So just something to keep in mind um, as far as putting down pre-emergent. Mm -hmm. So don't... And don't wait, don't wait too long. A little bit earlier is better than later when it comes to pre emergent But thank you for chiming in and for watching the content. I appreciate the support. All right, uh, let's see what questions we got here. So Jeremy um, Pruitt is chiming in. She says, hi, Ron. We've been loving your YouTube channel and we are new to Bermuda. Having it started next week. What fert should I use? My husband, Kenny, is so excited. He said he's going to squirt his fur, <laughs> squirt his fur on his face uh, tonight. Oh, that's funny. Um, so if you're putting down new Bermuda sod, uh, Jenny, uh, you could use like a, like a starter fur. You could use like that triple 12 that I showed you earlier. So uh, as, a, as a good option, just for like, if you're putting in new sod, uh, let me pull it up here. This guy is a good one. Um, let's go back here. Uh, this, 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 this triple 12 from, uh, that you can get on the golf course lawn. So this is a great, a great option. Um, also if you guys have like a site one nearby and you can get like carbon pro G, um, I would put that down on the lawn too. I put that down before the, the before the fert. Um, if you don't have a site one nearby and you still want to put down a, a great granular option that's going to help with rooting, um, this product Essential G, um, also on the golf course lawn store. This is also a great option of something that you can apply uh, to your lawn. But then yeah, I'd say I'd say uh, some carbon, definitely some granular carbon, um, and then uh, you know a, a triple twelve or something like that, just to just to give the lawn something to some food to to, to go with when you put that new sod in. So yeah, I'm glad you guys are enjoying the content and that your husband is all excited about getting his uh, his sod in and it should be good times. And once you guys get it in, just water it, get it rooted and then just start mowing it. And that's gonna, it's gonna help your uh, your lawn come in really nicely. Thank you guys so much for watching the content and for ch chiming in on the live stream. I really appreciate it. All right. All right. And, and, uh, and, of course, and Playmate Miami is giving a vote for that. I should definitely keep the live stream. We'll do my best, ma'am. I appreciate it. And uh, Kevin also agrees to that. So we got a super chat for from Kevin. Super chat received. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate the support. I was just trying to find that earlier and I couldn't. I didn't want to have too much dead time in the live stream. So I was like, where could I, if I can't find it? And I found it now. Thank you so much. He says, you're bribing me to keep, he's bribing, uh, bribing you to keep you motivated and keep uh, keep us motivated to see your RN journey. Yep, yep, definitely, man. It should be fun. Thanks so much, sir. I really appreciate it. Uh, Jerry's in the house. Thank you, uh, uh, Jerry. Thanks for coming to come hang out. And uh, let's see what other questions we got here. Travis always leading the, the the banner for the Golf Course Lawn Squad. He says, late to the show. What's up, Ron and Golf Course Lawn Squad? Also, great watering video today, Ron, very helpful. I'm glad you found that useful. But yeah, man, because because that's the thing that people um, often get you know wrapped around the axle about when it comes to watering. Most people put entirely too much water um, on their lawns. Like they think that the, the grass needs a lot more water than it needs. At least, again, I, 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 I'm answering this question as if you're in the Southeast United States. Around here in Georgia, we get, we get quite a bit of rain to where you really shouldn't need to be watering too heavily until you get into like at the earliest late this month into May is when you'll have to do it. And, and you know, if you guys watch that video and use some of those resources that show what our average rainfall a lot of times is, you know, typically only a, an inch or two, maybe three um, over the course of the entire month is when you, is how much water you need to put on your lawn. So I'm glad you guys found it useful. Um, it was a fun video to make. It was, um, it was fun eating, uh, the, uh, eating the, the sprinkler head for the thumbnail. If you guys haven't seen that, it's, if you guys haven't seen that as yet, you should go check it out. It's pretty fun. Uh, you can see it here. So this is actually, that is not like Photoshop. That is, um, actually what happened. Like I, you know, Alex was out there with a, with a camera and it actually took us about 15 minutes to actually get this shot. You waiting for the sprinkler head to come around and actually me smiling or not closing my eyes. 
Um, and that is the uh, the thumbnail for the video that I released yesterday on lawn watering. So it was a it was a fun video to make. I got good and wet making it. The hat is finally dried out, so it's it's good to go. It, was, it dried out today, so I am I'm good to go. It was it was, a, it was a fun video and a fun thumbnail to make. So thank you for watching, Travis. I really appreciate it. All right, let's see what else we got here. Yeah, so the new cartridge reel for the Edwin. He's chiming in, saying it's hundred four hundred thirty dollars. Yes, yeah, so that's actually it's probably more expensive than the Greens Master. But again, also for the Edwin, you've also got like a mounting system and stuff. So I get, I could see that it might be a little bit more. All right, let's see what else we got going on here. Um, Moro's in the live stream. He says, "Hey Ron, just checking in, saying hello, spending time with my family. Big week for us. Oh yes, right. You told me your sister came back. She had COVID and she came out of the hospital today. So." You know, uh, prayers for her. Thanks. Well wishes. Hope she does well. Speedy recovery. And he says, my carbon kid is doing some magic to my lawn. Thank you, sir. I am glad to hear that. I'm glad to, um, and definitely get to send me pictures, man. Make sure you take pictures of before. And then as you start using the carbon kit and seeing the results you get with it, definitely send me pics so I can see how it's working in your lawn. I'm definitely going to want to um, to see the results you get with it, uh, Moro. So I'm glad to hear your sister's doing well and that everything else is uh, going well in uh, your world. Uh, let's see what are the questions we have here. Um, R. Colson 74 says, hey, I'm currently dealing with a higher pH sitting at 736 and I have a bag of Carbon Pro G and I'm worried that it will raise my pH and hurt what I'm trying to do. What would you say, would you suggest though putting it down? Um, yeah, actually I would, um, R. Colson. So this is, a, this is a great, great point. So most biochar, and you are, you are correct that, that just most standard biochar that's not charged, um, will, it has a tendency to raise soil pH. Uh, uh, the biochar in Carbon Pro G is charged and it has a pH in the mid sixes. So that's why if you look at like a lot of the documentation that Lesko and Miramichi Green puts out on Carbon Pro G, it's billed as a pH optimizer, meaning that if your um, pH is low, it's going to try and bring it up to the mid sixes and if your pH is high, it's going to try and draw it down. Now, depending on your soil type um, and how much the product you put down, how much that's gonna, that, that movement's gonna happen is gonna vary. But they've actually done some testing. Like I think um, an, ag, an agricultural uh, lab in, I think it was NC State, did some testing with it. And they saw, they saw, like, they saw definitely movements with it. I think they saw, in some cases, uh, a movement as much as a point to a point and a half um, in pH, which is, which is huge. Uh, so yeah, if, you, if you're interested in that, go um, check out, uh, I, I have your email just um, R. Colson, so I think I can, uh, I'll send it to you. But if you go look at, if you just go to, to Lesko's website, go on Google and type in like Carbon Pro G Lesko, like the paper they have, like that has like the label, the second page has that research that was done on it and shows you like how it has the ability to move pH around. So I would absolutely still apply it to your lawn. Um, it's, and it's, it's, it's going to, it should help with actually bringing the pH into the, into the right uh, zone. So great question, one I've gotten before and uh, thanks for reaching out and hopefully that helps. All right. Let's see what other questions we have uh, going on here. So JH has an interesting question. He says, I'm in the process of rebuilding a triplex uh, mower for my Ventrac. Uh, first time real mowing. How much do you worry about debris in the yard, acorns, sticks, mulch, leaves? Uh, yeah, I do worry about that stuff. So really, uh, and don't forget concrete. I will tell you that if you hit concrete with your real mower, um, bad things will happen. Bad things will happen. Watch my, uh, my video on breaking my mower and you'll see exactly what can happen if you do that. But yeah, really, the, the, if you, you really want to avoid um, anything other than grass as much as you can, uh, J, JH leaves, not necessarily as bad, but like mulch, acorn sticks, anything hard like that, you really, you really want to avoid that. You want to get that stuff off the lawn um, before you mow, if at all possible, because um, if it doesn't damage the reel, at a minimum, it has, the, it's going to, um, you know, it, one, it can damage it, but it also has the, 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 the the likelihood of accelerating the wear on either the reel or the bed knife. So really, you know, the whole, if you want your, 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 your sharpening job that you put on this mower, so you're gonna have like a triplex. So, um, you know, you have, you have three cutting heads. You want that to last for an entire season or as long as possible. Um, only cut grass with it. You know, I, I would definitely would not hit acorn sticks or mulch with it at all. Leaves, depending on the leaves are the really, really small ones. Maybe you can get away with that, but like definitely not sticks, definitely not acorn and definitely not mulch. I would, I would, I would, I would be seriously concerned about doing that, making a regular practice out of doing it. If, you, if it happens now and then fine, but it's not, but a real mower is not a rotary mower. You can't just run over that stuff. Um, and it be okay. It's gonna, it's gonna eventually cause problems. So hopefully that helps. All right. Let's see what else what questions we have here. And you say, what else, and what else do you do along a gravel driveway to keep the random rock from damaging the wheat from the reel? So I don't have gravel, but um, I just, just keep it far enough away from the gravel, um, um, JH. So yeah, I mean, I, I see what you're saying. So you're worried about like gravel from the driveway getting into the grass. Uh, so what, what you're gonna have to do, and it sounds kind of like a pain, either put like a barrier to keep the gravel away out of the lawn, 
or before you mow that part of the lawn, do like a quick, you know, pre-mow walkthrough, just kind of check it real quick and say, hey, do I have any gravel here? And get rid of it. But because because gravel will absolutely damage a real mower. If you run over that, that's gonna be it's gonna be bad news. It's gonna be bad news, it's gonna be expensive bad news. So yeah, um, you know, either mow far enough away that you, you know, you're not gonna get into that zone, that little kind of like combination zone where the gravel falls out of the out of the the driveway into the lawn. Or um, you know, do a walkthrough or put like a, or install a barrier. You know, barrier is probably what I would would opt for if it were me. Great question. All right, let's see what other questions we have here. And then Lawn Journeys is saying, says, hey, thanks again, Ron, for going through the different carbon products. Uh, maybe I've been confused or others are confusing. I have a site one near me, so I'll give one of these a try this season. Thanks. Yep, it, absolutely, man. Give them a shot. Uh, you know, it's carbon products have made a huge difference in my lawn, um, and I'm a I'm a huge fan of them. I mean, anything that allows me to get greener grass using less fertilizer uh, and, you know, also improves nutrient uptake, improves water retention. There's, there's tons of benefits to it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a fan. So yeah, I'm glad that um, that the explanations are, are useful and hopefully you get your hands on some carbon and uh, and you get some good results too. All right, let's see what else we got here. Yeah, and you, you said you run an Earthway spreader too, so definitely pick up some carbon protein, give it a shot. Yeah, so if you have an Earthway spreader um, uh, lawn journeys, you should have no problems with carbon pro G going down. That is literally what I have and it works great. Again, I put down a ton of the stuff. And I don't have any problems with it jamming or clumping or doing anything weird. So uh, great, you know, if you got the same stuff I'm using, you shouldn't have a problem at all. All right, let's see what other questions we got going on here. Um, Ralph Oliver says that his first bag of carbon pro G that he bought last year was moist and clumpy. Maybe they refined their production process because I've never seen it since like that. So that, that could be it. Ralph, it could be that, yeah, when you first got it, there was a problem, and then since then it's gotten better because all the stuff that I've been putting down, and I, again, I've been putting down a lot of it, um, none of that's had, none of, the stuff, none of the stuff I've used this year has had any, and you know, actually it's a good point. You know, I think when last year when we did Alex's lawn, if you look at the, in the Fix My LV Lawn series on Carbon Pro G, I think there was one bag that we did have a little bit of clumping with, but it's never, but that was like one isolated instance. It was like one bag, um, in the summer of last year. Since then, I've never had a problem. So yeah, now that you jog my memory, I do I do remember that, but it's not been a, an issue since then. So, and I put, I've probably, conservatively, I've probably put down 30 bags of Carbon Pro G since then, conservatively speaking, right? And none of it's been, I've not had any of that problems that um, that Laundrinus was talking about. So it, it very well could be they fixed the problem. So uh, it's, a, it's a good good call out. All right. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here. And uh, Eric Garcia says, I just got my soil test results in the mail from um, Golf Course, I guess for Golf Course Lawn. Can you give it a look when I get the results? Uh, yes, yes, you can. So once you once you get the results, um, Eric, here's my email address. It's ron at golfcourselawn.com. Shoot me an email with the um, with the soil test results. Make sure you take a picture of it or a screenshot of it. Don't, like some, sometimes you guys will send me um, like a link to the login on like the my soil testing site and I can't I don't have access to your like your portal so I can't actually see the results that way so take a picture of it take a good screenshot of it of the of the results and then send that to me an email and I'll look at it and we'll uh, we'll figure out a plan a treatment plan based on that so uh, glad you got your soil test and once you get your results I will definitely help you out sir thanks so much for uh, for letting me know all right let's see what else we got um going here. Uh, nice AZ Lawn says, will your RN15 take over the tiff weight? Probably not, um, um, Nice AZ. Um, what, what, it, you, what you're seeing, especially on the right side of my lawn where the tiff weight, where the RN15 took, is it's like a mutt lawn. It's a blend of RN15 and tiff weight because the two grass types, as far as like um, texture wise, they are very, they're similar. They're both like tiff weight's fairly, tiff 419 is fairly fine. And Arden 15 is also fairly fine. So from a standpoint of like how they like look, if you hold both of them in your hand, um, color aside, they look fairly similar. Um, what the difference is, is the color. The color of Arden 15 is deeper. It's a deeper green um, than Tiffway. And especially when the temperatures get cooler, that is where you really see the difference between the two. Whereas our Tiffway will like cry uncle really pretty quickly and, and fall away. Arden 15 stays green like a lot longer. Like again, there's parts of my lawn that all last year, all this past season never went dormant. Like the, the areas right in front of the, in front of the patio on the back lawn, um, there was always a little bit of green poking through throughout the entire winter. It's never gone fully dormant. So, um, so as far as it taking over, I wouldn't say that that's not really the goal. That's not what's going to happen. You can almost think of it like when for like cool season guys, 
whenever they have like a, a, a lawn where they have like a mix of like rye and Kentucky bluegrass, um, as long as the rye and KBG are, are relatively mixed throughout the lawn, the lawn, the color looks pretty good and the lawn overall looks pretty good, right? Even though it's a blend of two different grass types, it's it's something similar to that. So when you look at the right side of my lawn, particularly where Arden 15 took very well, um, what you are seeing is a blend of Arden 15 and Tifway. Like it's not like the idea of like Arden 15 choking out the Tifway is probably not going to happen. Like Bermuda choking out Bermuda is not 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 necessarily a thing. Not something a thing that you can you can plan for anyway. So, uh, great question. Great question though. All right, let's see what other questions we have here. We got questions around uh, sand, and let's see here. Let's see. Yep. And then um, let's see. So yeah. So GM um, wants to learn. Says my GM pegs are stuck. I need an impact. Yeah, what you're gonna need is, I think, I've, you know, like, who's got a great video on that lawn to learn? Look up uh, Brent Grascapades channel. Um, Brett, you should see him. He's always like, an, he works with Alan. You'll see him a lot of times in like um, any of the Yard Mastery content, but he has a video on, I forget the name of it, but he's got a video on actually showing you how to do that, like how to break those loose. I think one of the wrenches you're gonna need, if memory serves me, is a one inch, and the other one, I, I forget, it's either like a three quarters or a seven eighths. I forget which one it is. I think one of them is a one inch though. Like there's two different sizes. Um, and then you just need a lot of elbow grease to really to really break it loose. But you can you can do it. I mean, it can, it can happen. And Brett, Brett's video is gonna be a good way to show you how to do that. All right, let's see what else we got going on. So Matt G says, hey, uh, hey Ron, my soil test, uh, my soil results came back and I noticed my iron levels were off the scales at 35 while optimal range is four to 11. How should I read this? My lawn will my lawn always just be dark green? Um, probably not, Matt, because it's it's gonna that that's gonna fall off over time. It's gonna fall off eventually. If you don't mind, um, send me a copy of your soil test results. I'd like to just, just to see what you're uh, what you're referring to. My email address is here, Ron at golfcourselawn.com. Like send me an email with that. Get take a good picture of it, and I'll take a look at it, and we will see. Because I mean, here's the thing. My last year when I was doing that experiment with um, with uh, Melorganite and Brant Supreme Green. I, I wanted to see like, hey, if I went really, really heavy with iron on my lawn, what would happen? And I put down, I think something like eight or 9% iron um, all at, all in a short period of time. Um, and then I did a soil test after that. And then my my iron tested at like 50 something. I have to, I, I've got the soil test results. I've got to pull, I can pull up here. I'll take a picture of it and I'll, I'll send it to you if you email me. Um, and in over time, it just it just fell off. By by um, in the fall, it was still higher than it came down. And then in the, my, my, by the time I got down to uh, the winter, um, the iron levels had already returned to normal. They'd already, they'd already fallen off quite a bit. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's not gonna be, it's, in my case, I my levels were. If you're, assuming you're dealing with a my soil test, which it sounds like what you have, my levels were higher than yours, like like quite a bit higher than yours, almost 20 points higher than yours, um, and it, it it fell off. That those levels came right back down, and my and my lawn was not. Unfortunately, my lawn was not green, was not dark green the entire time. That's not a benefit of uh, of that. So, but great question. If you want some of your soil test results, look at it. But you're probably going to be fine. All right, what are the questions we got going on here? And yes, as far as um, while your soil looks like that, I would not add more iron to the lawn um, while we're waiting for the levels to come down into the into their happy range. That's a that's a good good question. So a good fertilizer, um, if you've not decided on one yet, uh, like the Humic Max is good because that one is literally um, nitrogen, potassium, and humic acid. There's there's not um, there's not any iron in it. I did I particularly for I particularly chose that one for that reason because I didn't want every time someone put it down their lawn they're adding iron to their lawn, um, at least in a granular form every every single month. So um, if you want a good option, humic max is a great one. If you unless you already have a fertilizer that you uh, that you already like. All right, uh, yeah, Tamara, you're very very welcome. You're very welcome. Uh, let's see here, and then Daryl says, oh, very cool. He says, hey, he found a golf course five minutes away um, from you to service my True Cut Real More. Very awesome. See, and that's and that, that's a great point, guys. So um, one of the biggest questions, whenever you guys are gonna consider getting into Real More, right? You're gonna take on Real More and it's something you wanna consider doing. Like outside of like, you know, um, one, you're like your, pr your price range, your budget. Um, one of the biggest considerations you need to make is like, where can I get the mower service? Like where you, where you can get your mower service is a huge, huge, um, point to keep in mind as far as, um, you know, as far as real mowing. So, you know, if, if you go and you buy, like in this case of Daryl, he's got like a true cut. If, you, if there's no one around you that can service a true cut, it's a great mower, but it's just going to be kind of a hassle when you have to work on it. So make sure whenever you're going to the, the idea of picking out a mower, also do your research and figure out who in the area can work on it because they're going to, they're going to need maintenance, um, at some point. So thanks for, uh, chiming in, um, uh, Daryl, I'm glad that you found someone to take care of it. All right. Um, and yeah, and, and then Scott Lonsler, he's he's helping you out here, saying that yeah, using the uh, you to, he's a torch and a cheater bar to break them loose. So very, very, very cool. 
All right, let's see what other questions we got going on here. R. Colson is also trying to make a vote for me to come to Texas to do a Fixing Lawns with Ron series. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, Greg, I think I already answered your question about the caked on stripes uh, using a um, a uh, a rake, like either using using a broom or using a leveling rake. Either one of those will work well. Um, but yeah, that that's that's what I would do. On right, let's see what we got here. So so Matt says, any plans to use yard mastery granular products on, in your yard? Which one did you, did you choose if you did or didn't? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't have any issue with the, with the Yard Mastery um, products. I mean, like one of the ones that, I, like the triple twelve that I show you on my um, on the store is from Yard Mastery. Um, and, and as far as what the, the fertilizer that Alex is probably going to be using on his lawn this season, it is going to be the Yard Mastery. It's going to be that triple twelve. It's going to be um, actually this one. I'll show you. I mean, I, I think you've, you may have seen it already, but this is the fertilizer that Alex is going to be using on his lawn uh, this season, Matt. Uh, mainly because all three of his macros are low. Uh, and this one is just a great fit to just feed his lawn over the course of the season. So this is what he's gonna he's gonna go with. So you know, depending on um, on what on what your lawn needs, um, you know, you, yeah, Yard Master's got a really good assortment. They have that, they got that flagship, which is nice. They have the um, uh, the the high uh, potassium fertilizer, which is nice. The orange bag one, like that. So their stress blend, that's a good fertilizer too. Um, I just I just really like the Lebanon turf fertilizers. I've had I've had really good results with them. And like once I find something that works really well for me, like I don't I don't really want to replace it. This is a really good reason for it. But I don't have any I don't have anything negative to say about the Yard Mastery for it. They're all they're all quality products. But I just like the uh, for my lawn I like the Lebanon turf ones, and that's that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with. But uh, hopefully that helps answer your question. Um, if I did not use Lebanon turf ferts, what would I use? I don't know. Probably the flagship. That's probably not a bad one. I'd probably run it at a, at a fairly low rate because I think that's like 24% nitrogen or something like that in there. So I'd run it a little bit lower. But uh, but yeah, uh, that's probably the one I would use if I were not using Humic Max uh, or or, a Le or an equivalent uh, fertilizer from Lebanon turf. All right. Let's see what questions we got going on here. Uh, Money May says, "Hey Ron, new follower, love the channel." Uh, thanks for watching, uh, Money May. It says, uh, I want a greens mower in spring and fall to keep my Kentucky bluegrass turf type tall fescue perennial rye mix at one and a half inches, but let it grow out to two and a half inches in the summer. How are they at these heights? Um, not that great, uh, Money May, unfortunately. Like real mowers, real mowers will, are really um, like an, in, an inch and a half down is really what you need to be thinking about. Like an inch and a half is really like the upper limits of what I would be using a greens mower as far as like a, a real a real mower to cut a greens mower won't even go that high like a like my um, Toro I want to say the the max height of cut on it is like one point two five inches one and a quarter inches is as high as it'll go so you can't even get the heights that you're talking about um, with a greens mower um, with it with a true cut a true cut I think will get up will get to that one and a half inch without issue it'll probably get it maybe even closer a little higher than that but the quality of the cut's not going to be as good because we're we're real mowers really shine is at lower heights of cut. What, what, what you're gonna tend to find is as you cut taller and taller, um, what's gonna happen is as the roller is coming, it's simply just gonna bend the grass over and you're gonna end up with a lot of stragglers left behind when you cut the lawn. It's just not gonna look as good versus when you cut it lower like it's designed, um, it's just gonna do a better job um, because that's that's really what the mower is designed to, to um, you know, it's designed for lower cutting heights. So in your case, I would just get you a quality, just get you a quality rotary mower, man. Get you like a Toro or um, a nice Honda, like an HRX or something nice like that, and just use that um, for your lawn. Because again, like a real mower, and particularly a greens mower, is not the right answer to every question. For a Kentucky Blue, for a KBG uh, and a fescue lawn, especially at the heights that you're trying to keep them at, um, you're not gonna, a greens, mower is a greens mower definitely will not work. You're gonna wanna use, uh, if, if you wanna try a real mower, a true cut could be an option, but I don't think you're gonna get as great a quality of cut as you might be thinking. So just just something to uh, to keep in mind, uh, money may. All right, uh, let's see here. What are the questions we have going on? Um, let's see, so um, Mike is saying, hey, I'm set to put down new sod next week in Charlotte, North Carolina. Very cool, Mike. Is I'm I'm so torn between Tiff Tough Bermuda and Emerald Zoysia. Help! I just bought a John Deere 180 SL to go low. Very cool, Mike. Um, so you're you you can't go wrong with either one of them. Here's how how I would what I would do to make you the choice, make the decision. Um, Emerald Zoysia is a beautiful grass. It's a really nice looking grass. Um, I'd say how much do you plan on using your lawn? That's what I would use as the criteria for de determining between those two grass types. Because while zoysia is really pretty, it's a really nice looking grass, um, it doesn't take it doesn't take wear being abused nearly as well as Bermuda does. So if you have like kids 
um, and our people are going to be playing football on it or running around and messing around on the lawn, um, Zoich is probably not the best option for that uh, because it just it just it grows slower, it recovers slower, it doesn't it doesn't take doesn't put up with abuse like Bermuda does. Like a good example, like a, um, a buddy of mine, one of, the, one of my friends that has like a, uh, a lawn care business, his front lawn is Zoysia. And he had us over at this point, it'd be almost, it's almost two years now. Um, and had us over for an afternoon to play volleyball. So we set up a volleyball court. We're out there playing volleyball, like, you know, you know, all on the lawn for probably four or five, almost six hours of playing volleyball, beating up the lawn. Um, and it, his lawn did not recover. And it's still, there's still some spots where they're still a little bit weak, but it didn't recover until the following year. Like literally just that six hours of being, having people like running all over it, you know, barefoot and just, 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 just trampling on it was enough trauma that the lawn just took a, just, just didn't look good for like the remainder of the season. Whereas Bermuda, that wouldn't have been a problem. A good example of my lawn, like last year, uh, during the 4th of July, we had, we had company over and people lit fireworks off on the lawn. They did play cornhole on it, um, did all kinds of stuff. I mean, and if you looked at it the following day after the 4th of July, it looked like a war, like a war zone. Like they were like, you could see like the spots of the lawn where the cornhole, um, I don't know what we call them, the cornhole, like trays or tables had been. Um, you saw all that stuff. And then a week later, you could tell nothing ever happened. It looked like nothing ever happened to the lawn. So literally, Bermuda has the ability to heal and just take abuse um, probably better than a lot of other types of grass. Definitely better than zoysia. So uh, if you're gonna, if you're choosing between the two, um, choose, decide on which one, you're, depending on how you plan to use the lawn and um, make your decision based on that. Uh, for me, I would probably go for Bermuda because I like Bermuda. Um, but you know, Zoysia is a great looking lawn too. Hopefully, hopefully that helps um, with um, with your with your thought process. You're not going to go wrong either way, but just you know, depending on what you do with your family, use that as your your uh, thought making process. All right, uh, let's see what other questions we got going on here. Uh, Dante Jackson says, uh, "Hey Ron, love the channel. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. Appreciate the support. We're in the process of completing our new home build. Congratulations." Is what type of Bermuda grass would you recommend we request from the builder? Um, I don't know. It depends what they what they have. I mean, if you can get um, if you can get celebration, I think celebration is available as a sod. I think so. If you can get if you can get celebration or even like Tiff Tiffway four nineteen is really good, man. I can't. I, I, I mean, Tiffway four nineteen mowed well and taken care of is a beautiful grass. So you can go with Tiffway. You can go with Tiff Tough, like what he, what he was um, mentioning. Um, what are some other Bermuda ones? I mean, if if you if you don't ask the builder, they're probably going to put Tiffway 419 because that's at least if you're again if you're in Georgia, that's one of the more common ones that the builders are using um, in this area. So it just depends on um, just depends on what you're what you want to go with, which 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 grass. You're not going to go wrong either way. If you can get chances of some celebration, celebration is gorgeous. Or the um, the Bermuda that uh, uh, Brett put on his lawn is really nice. I think it's called is it called Bimini? I think it's called Bimini. Um, I think it's what he put down on his lawn. That's a beautiful uh, Bermuda too. I think that's mainly a Florida. You tend to see that in Florida more so around here. I don't know anyone around here that has that. But if you're in the Georgia area, Tiffway 419 or Tiff Tough are, are going to be two options that are going to be pretty easy to, to get your hands on. And either one of them is going to look pretty good. Um, if you want to see what Tiffway 419 looks like, like Alex's lawn, look at the look at the videos of Alex's lawn when it was nice and green uh, in the Fix My Ugly Lawn series. That is Tiffway 419. And if you want to see what Tiff Tough can look like, um, go either make a trip to like Real Rollers Turf Park because they have Tiff Tough there or um, just I guess look online for Tiff Tough if you want. But I mean, like, yeah, if you want to see what a really nice Tiffway 419 lawn can look like, take a look at Alex's lawn and you can see some footage of that um, on my YouTube channel in the Fix My Ugly Lawn series. So can't go wrong either way. All right, Nick O has a question about Poana and, and, and post-emergent. He says, post-emergent for Poanya. Um, uh, Nick, I would say uh, image, just do image. That's a, that's a great option. Um, as far as one that you can easily get, it's inexpensive, not difficult to mix, not likely to hurt your lawn, um, pr a little bit more forgiving than a lot of the stronger herbicides that will kill Poana, Poana a little bit faster. Um, image is what I would go with. And if you look at um, my channel, if you go to like um, YouTube and type Ron Henry, Poana, you'll find a video that I did earlier this year on image uh, on how to mix it and how to use it on your lawn. So that's that's what I would use um, to, to knock out Poana. The only negative to, to image is that it takes a while to work. It's gonna take three to five weeks for it to knock out the um, to knock out the the weeds, but it's um, again, it's an easy one, it's accessible, and that is what I would recommend, sir. So great question. Great, great question. We got a super chat in the house here. Thank you so much, Timothy. Super chat received. Yeah, so thanks so much, sir. I really appreciate the support. Thank you so much. And uh, let's see what else we got going on here. So Eric Garcia has a question about uh, putting down a spectricide weed stop in the morning. 
He says, can I put down some Spectrite Wee Stop in the morning with 39 degree temps? I am looking to put it down when they're still due in the morning. I'm I'm near Hamilton Mill, Georgia. Very cool. Great question, Eric. Um, let's let's wait a little bit. I mean, it 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 as long as the the lawn is wet, the weeds are wet to where the the granular will stick to the weeds, it should work fine. But just in a couple of days, we're gonna have weather, we're gonna have weather that's a little bit warmer into the the 70s, and that's when the, you figure, just like the grass grows whenever the temperatures are a little bit warmer, the weeds also grow when the temperatures are warmer. So when you put that herbicide down, um, we want them, once you get it on the leaves, you want them to kind of draw it in and really take it up and, and kill them. Let's let the temperatures get a little bit warmer, especially since like, if you're in Hamilton Mill, you're not that actually far from um, from where I am. You know, you know, by Monday, we're gonna have temps in the 70s. So if, if you can, I would wait till like early Monday morning, do it then. Um, and then you'll be good to go. Then you'll 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 maximize the uptake of that herbicide. You're probably still gonna get a good result either way. If you do it tomorrow morning, it's probably gonna work fine, just fine too. But for me, I would wait until things are a little bit warmer, like because especially since it's only gonna be a couple of days um, before we get nicer temperatures. If that makes sense. Great, great question. All right. Let's see what other questions we got here. Um, Jason A says, Hey Ron, I have a ton of nuts already. Would it be okay to apply uh, certainty and turf plex at the same time? <laughs> Um, here's the thing, uh, um, Jason, I've never, I don't know, you'd have to test them to, to, to know for sure. I've never mixed that concoction together to know how it would work, how it would work. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that question because I've never mixed certainty and turf plex at, at the same time. And when you say you have a ton of nuts edge, do you have, do you have enough nuts edge that you're going to blanket the entire lawn? Um, with certainty, or is it just where you're gonna spot spray just the areas that have nuts edge? Because in that case, we're talking about two applications, right? So I wouldn't wanna, just because you have like a, a couple of areas of your lawn that may have nuts edge, I wouldn't wanna go and spray certainty over the entire lawn, um, you know, just because you have a couple of areas. And if you if you mix, you know, um, turf plex with it, that kind of leads me to believe that that's your plan. Your plan is to do just to blanket the entire lawn. So unless your entire lawn is full of nuts edge, uh, I, I probably wouldn't do that. And if it were me, I would probably spray the herbicide separate from the uh, the fertilizer. I've never mixed those two together, so I don't know how they would mix, how they would perform. But if it were me, I would do the herbicide separate what, it, by itself, and then I would go back with uh, the fertilizer afterwards. I would not, I would not personally do them both at the same time, and mainly because I don't know how they would mix together. So hopefully that helps. Great, great question. I'm sorry you're dealing with nutsedge, man. It stings. It's it's one of the nutsedge is one of those weeds that's that's um that's just it's super tenacious. It's really really hard to get rid of permanently. All right, so what are the questions we got going on here? Uh, Greg says, thanks. You're very, very welcome, Greg. Thank you for the question. Uh, and let's see here. And Timothy says he went with a smooth roller for the true cut as Lee recommended. After seeing it with some pictures of my lawn and discussing with me, uh, I'll send some pics uh, being uh, BYD at the moment. Very, very cool. Yeah, man, if you're just starting out, I think Lee makes a good point. Using like a smooth roller will work well. And then, you know, as you get, you're getting down to lower cutting heights and you're, you're you know, you're, you want to, um, once you get your, your cutting heights are just lower and you really want to you know, also use that groove roller as a means to help like break up thatch a little bit and just to, to, to get a more consistent cut, a groove roller becomes, makes, starts to make a lot more sense. I mean, I cut my lawn with a smooth roller for years. I mean, up until uh, this week, up until this week with the, uh, with the true cut, that's when the true cut got the, uh, the, the groove roller. And it does make a difference. Once, once you eventually graduate away from the smooth roller to the groove roller, you will like how it looks, but it's really something that after you've been cutting for a while, that it makes more sense. But congratulations again on the, on the real mower, sir. Very, very nice. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, Greg Lyons says, my front yard is steep and my real mower will stop. I've been told that if I disconnect the low, the low oil reservoir uh, sensor, then it won't stop anymore. Have you ever had that issue when your oil level is good? Yes, Greg. So um, I'm not telling you to do this, but on my mower, I have to do Like on my mower, I did the same thing, right? So my mower, if I have like a standard true cut that I take out of the box with the, with the sensor um, on, uh, like if it's connected up, on my lawn on the slope, it will shut off all the time. So I personally disabled it. I'm not telling you that you should go do that. Um, but I always make sure my mower's got plenty of oil in it. So I'm not telling you that you should go do that, but I'm just saying that in my case, I had the exact same issue that you are talking about and I would not be able to mow my front lawn with a true cut if I had not done that. So um, just something to consider. Not, I'm not saying, time, again, not full disclosure, not full like, you know, like disclaimer. I'm not telling you to disable, you know, any of the safety mechanisms on your mower, um, but that is something that I, that I have done and I've seen other people do on their mowers that have slopes uh, to prevent um, the, the exact issue that you're uh, you're dealing with. But just always make sure your mower's got um, oil in it. Make sure you check it regularly. Uh, great, great question. All right. 
Uh, so wise guy is chiming in here. He says, "Hey Ron, if you remember pics of my lawn, would you would a swordman work for me? I, if you can't if you can't remember, I'll send you pics. I do remember your lawn, a uh, wise guy, and yeah, swordman would work good on your lawn. I, I do remember. You've got you've got one like kind of like a like a from what I remember like a gradual swale area a little bit, um, and a swordman is going to work just fine in there. You, you'll have to figure out like what that particular part of your lawn likes. Like that, that's that's the best way to describe it. Like with, with my lawn." Um, it, it, the back lawn can cut pretty much any way I want, but the front lawn, it likes being cut diagonally. Like as far as like getting the most even cut and the, just the, the grass looking good overall, cutting it diagonally works best for me. So for those little small, um, strange areas of your lawn, you'll figure out like what you need to do, whether you need to hit it at an angle or you need to mow a certain way, um, to, to get the best result. But a swordman on your lawn will work just fine. Should work out just, just, just fine. Great choice. A great mower. All right. Let's see what other questions we got here. Uh, yeah, Dimitri's saying, uh, hi, hey Ron, I'm using an AgriFab lawn sweeper. Works great for sweeping up plugs. I'll send pics. I'm just spreading plugs into my backyard that's further uh, hoping they'll take root. Okay, that's a good idea. That's a good point. So I didn't consider that. Yeah, so taking the plugs out of your front lawn and taking them into your back lawn as a means to kind of put plugs in to get roots. I could see that. Yeah, that works. Cool. That's a good option. Very, 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 very cool. Uh, let's see what other questions we got here. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, um, Humanoz says, uh, 78 says, there's a question around green up. He says 70% uh, green coming out of dormancy, but a few dead spots. What do you think happened? I, I would just give it a little bit more time. Um, um, uh, Mina's uh, 78 on my lawn. And actually again, tomorrow morning, I will take a picture of it and show you guys what I'm talking about. My lawn is green up, is, is fairly for the most part out of dormancy. It's greened up really nicely, but there are still a couple of spots where there is, there's a, there's a patch in front of the rocks that's about this big that the lawn is just slow to come out of dormancy. There's like a little bit of green fuzz there, but it's still not like the rest of the lawn. And there's not, I've checked, there's not any rocks under there. There's not anything weird going on under the soil there. It's just coming out of dormancy a little later than um, the rest of the lawn. What, what used to be, what it was is that area is where um, the sprinkler heads on my lawn used to, one of the sprinkler heads used to be. So whenever they changed it out, I think, I'm not sure whatever happened to that area. I can't, I don't understand why it was still, um, after so many years, still behave that way. But um, I'll take a picture and I'll show you what I'm talking about. But I, I would not worry about it too much just yet. Give it a little bit more time. If in three weeks uh, you still have dead spots, um, then we can maybe be concerned about it. But again, with these dead spots, um, make sure that they're getting enough sun. So if they have, if they have enough sunlight um, and you're also mowing them, even though there's, the grass isn't growing that well, um, they should come in. They should, they should eventually catch up to the rest of the lawn. But I mean, the biggest thing I can think of without even seeing your lawn that, that comes to mind is if there's shade, if there's more shade in that spot where that doesn't get as much sunlight perhaps, that could slow um, the lawn coming out of dormancy. But uh, but yeah, outside of that, I can't think of anything else really off the top of my head that would, that would cause it to be slow because we're still early in the season and I just give it a few more weeks and then we can see then how the lawn, how the lawn greens up. So great, uh, great, great point. All right, let's see what other questions uh, we have here. Da, 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 da. And you said, um, uh, traveling over 51 says, hey, do you think I could put down some Bermuda seed now and it, would it germinate? I live about 45 minutes east, east of Atlanta. Um, right now, like, so if your lawn is, say you're just, you're just seeding your lawn from scratch, right? And you want to put down Bermuda seed. It now is still a little bit early, uh, traveling over 51. You want soil temps to be at 65 degrees or higher, like consistently there or higher, uh, for, for that to be a thing. So really the end of this month, like end of April, early May is when you're going to want to consider any kind of seeding projects. So if you decided you're going to, you're not going to sod your lawn, you're just going to seed it from scratch. Um, you know, into May is when I would, I would take on something like that. That's a better time of year, um, to do it right now is still a little bit early it, it, for my, for my, uh, my taste. All right. Let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, the questions we have. So, um, we have Fabian Ferrio he's saying, yeah, he still has, um, says he's, I still have winter grass mixed in with my Bermuda that's growing. Will the winter grass die off soon? Uh, it should, it should. I mean, what's going to happen Fabian is as the, um, as the temps go up, um, the winter grass is going to, like the Bermuda is going to start thriving and the winter grass is going to start being stressed and the Bermuda should begin taking over. So, um, it should die out. I mean, if you want to spray it out, depending on how much it is, you can, but, um, I would just allow, let the Bermuda do its thing once the temps get a little bit, um, warmer. Something else you can do is if, is mow, uh, the lawn a little shorter, right? Cause most winter, most, um, cool season grass types, uh, like to be mowed taller, so um, if you start mowing your, your lawn a little bit shorter, like Bermuda, like which it will enjoy, that's also going to stress the winter lawns, which is gonna help the Bermuda to thrive. It's gonna stress the winter grass. It's gonna help the Bermuda take over a little bit better. So that, that should help too. 
Um, so yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't stress too much about it, um, especially if it's been um, we're still early in the season. So you know, once by by Mayish Juneish when like heat is is here, uh, you should see the Bermuda really begin to pick up, and it should be a problem for that winter grass that you're dealing with, especially if you're mowing shorter, especially if you're mowing shorter. All right, let's see what we have. Uh, what else we got going on here? Uh, let's see. Um, on uh, one street says, I've given up for this year. What is the best weed killer for Bermuda grass? Uh, glyphosate, probably. Uh, the thing that people love to use in the spray on their lawns, like Roundup. If you want to, if you want to try and get rid of Bermuda, you can use uh, Roundup. But I can tell you that it's it's probably going to take more than one application. Like one is probably not going to get it done. Bermuda is really, really again, it's really difficult to kill. Um, so you know, Roundup, you know, glyphosate is going to be uh, is what you could go with if you want to try and kill it. You'll probably have to do one application, and then three weeks later, probably have to do another one if you're really trying to get rid of it. Um, but uh, but yeah, it just depends on uh, on how bad you want uh, the Bermuda gone uh, one three. So good luck with that one. Bermuda is a tough one. Once it, once it's in, it's tough to get rid of. All right, uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, da, 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 and it says and, yeah, and, and traveling over says yeah. It says it's a bare area trying to make a putting green, not overseeding. I understand. Okay, so that, again, that my answer doesn't change really. Um, even though you're trying to make a putting green, same thing. Let's let the temperatures get a little bit warmer before putting the seed down. Uh, because we just want to make sure we get we get good germination. Yeah, by the end of this month, you're going to get a better a better result with germination if you just wait just a little bit longer. So at the end of the month, early May, that's going to be a better time to go with uh, with seeding. All right. So what are the questions we got going on here? And uh, KBG says today was the first cut using my brand new California trimmer. That's worth applause. He says, it was my first cut and it made my KBG look amazing. I bet it did. I bet it did. And here's the thing. Here's the thing, KBG King. This is only the first cut. If it looks amazing now, it's going to get even better as you continue mowing with it. So right now you think it looks good. It's going to get even better as you as you keep doing it. So don't, don't even look at what now is what it's going to be. Figure, talk to me about a month from now and then it's going to really, really look awesome. Really good option. Okay, so got a super chat here from Tim. Thank you so much, super sir. Chat received. He says, for your time, I appreciate everything you do and all the info you provide. Love the live stream on Friday and all your videos. Thank you so much for watching, sir. I truly appreciate the support. I really, really do appreciate it. All right. Uh, let's see uh, what Helmut Ruckers is chiming in saying. He says, sorry, Ron, I had to go with Carbon Pro G instead of the Essential G since uh, one uh, side has, yeah, site one has the bag priced at $24.99. Yep, order you four bags, lay on your Zoysia. Yep, like I, was, like I was telling you, man, if you got a site one nearby, definitely go with the Carbon Pro G because it's just, it's their equivalent products and it's a lot cheaper. It's like $25 is cheaper than $65, right? So there you go. Very option, very good. Let me Let me know how it works out. All right, let's see what other questions uh, we have going on here. Uh, let me take a sip of my, of my drink. And while I do that, if you guys wouldn't mind, if you're new to the live stream, um, hit that like button ever so gently. I'd really appreciate it. It's free for you guys, and it's an easy way to support the channel. Mm -hmm. And question about overseeding from Benjamin Crowley from Australia. He says, hey, Ron, uh, um, Benjamin from Australia again. He says, I'm curious to see why you don't overseed your Bermuda with rye in the winter. Um, great question, Benjamin. Mainly because I don't want to have to spray it out in the spring. That's that's the main reason for doing it, right? Um, one, a couple of reasons. One, I don't want to have to put herbicides on my lawn in the spring to get rid of the of the uh, of the rye. And then also in winter months, while I do like enjoy going out and just having like a fun mow, like going out and just knocking the top the the top um, high spots off of like dormant lawn. I don't want to have to mow my lawn in the winter time. So like really, if you if I go and put rye down, if I oversee with rye. I mean, I'm already mowing several times a week, like from now all the way into like whatever, October. And if I go overseas with rye, that means literally I'm going to be mowing year round, right? And that's just not something that one, I don't want to have to do that. I, want, I don't really like cold weather. So I don't want to have to get out there when it's super cold to be mowing the lawn. And then also, um, as far as just in the spring, because I want the Bermuda to, gr to green up, you know, relatively um, nicely when it's supposed to, then I've got to go out and take a herbicide and spray the rye out, get rid of it. It's just kind of a hassle. So um, for me, it's just not for me. It's not, you know, I just, I've just not something that, um, that I've, I've ever done and, and have really decided to do. I mean, at some point I might, but at this, but, um, right now I don't, I don't really think so. It, it does look cool. I will tell you this. Like if you look at the, um, the real rollers turf park, like they have like their tiff tough is overseeded with rye and it looks really cool. It's really like the color is really nice. But um, it, you always have that problem in the spring where you got to get some kind of herbicide on it to get rid of it at some point, right? So that's that's why I don't do it. But thank you so much, sir, for chiming in from Australia. I really appreciate it. Um, I appreciate the support. It's kind of cool to have people from around the world uh, chiming in on the, on the Friday night live stream. I guess for you, it's probably Saturday. 
Because I think you guys are ahead of us, right? So it's probably Saturday for you are instead of Friday right now. But at any rate, thank you, sir. I appreciate the support. All right, and then Josh Habib, of course. Super chat received. He says, happy Friday, bud. Great show as always. Favorite non-lawn care. Oh, what's my favorite um, uh, lawn, non-lawn care YouTube channel? Oh, favorite lawn, non-lawn care YouTube channel. Um, probably uh, Star Talk. I like I like uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm, I'm kind of a geek, so I like anything having to do with like science or physics or uh, uh, you know the universe, like those kinds of things. I enjoy um, a lot of his live streams, so I like um, that show Star Talk by um, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I like uh, what else? That's that's when I watch quite a bit. I also like you know what else? I like the Hodge twins. I love the Hodge twins. Like those, those guys are right. So if at the end of the night, at the end of the day, when I want to unwind and watch something funny and watch Keith and Kevin. Um, at crazy, I uh, I watch their their stuff too. As a matter of fact, my Christmas gift, one of my gifts, if I got it here, if I can pull it up, was uh, this one. Was I got this? I got this for Christmas. The if you've watched the the the, the Hodge twins, you know what that's all about all kinds of games, all kinds, right? So I got the Hodge twins hat. So um, when I want to learn something, when I want to um, feed my brain, I watch a lot of Star Talk uh, or like like Neil deGrasse Tyson, and then just for just fun, I'll watch Hodge twins. I watch Keith and Kevin because they they are they are a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun to watch. Very entertaining. Uh, great question. I never asked that one before. And okay, let's see what other questions we got here, guys. We're winding down, so I'm talking to you guys out. Uh, actually, no, we actually got quite a few, few more. All right, so let's see what else we got going on here. So we have a question from Kay Ward. He says, I've been looking for a used true cut. What's your thoughts? Um, um, I'll be down in Georgia next month. Let me know if we see a good deal. Uh, yeah, so a tr- a th- the nice thing about a true cut, man, is they're so, they're all over the place here in Georgia, uh, Kay Ward. So you can pick up a, a nice one in pretty good shape for, Six fifty to a thousand dollars. They're in that range, um, and when you get closer to a thousand dollar range, you're typically going to find that it's been serviced, like it's fresh, all ready to go. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can you can save yourself quite a bit of money by picking up a pre-owned one. Um, and again, Georgia, they're all, they're all, literally all over the place. So uh, so yeah, I mean, as far as where to pick one up, like I was saying earlier, fit, Craigslist, um, Facebook Marketplace, Offer Up, those are all good places to get one. You can also call like any of the. Um, any of the places that do work on them, any of those those ser- like that service um, real mowers, and ask them if they have any that they may have for sale or know where they can pick one up because some of those guys have the inside track on 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 mowers, right? So something you can consider. But yeah, TrueCut's a great mower as far as like um like I always say, one mower to rule them all um, that will work on pretty much all lawn types. It's really really hard to beat a TrueCut. It doesn't have the best the, the absolute best quality of cut, but as far as a mower that will work everywhere and it's like built like an absolute tank, uh, it's tough to beat a TrueCut. Great great point. All right, uh, let's see what other questions we got here. Um, da, 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 um, da, Josh Tudashavaka says, sorry for the late response, my soul sucks bad, low on almost everything, so heavily focused on improving my soul this year. This next growing season, my grass looks amazing. Okay, well, sounds good, two shots of vodka. Thanks for, for chiming in with that. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here. All right, so yeah, Dalvin Larry has a question. He says, hey, Ron, based off your course calendar, when would you recommend lawn leveling or seeding? So on the course calendar, when I talk about uh, lawn leveling, I actually don't have anything on there about overseeding, but I do have a, a, a section on leveling in there. And um, the months of um, May and June are the months that I, may, I recommend for doing top dressing work, mainly because the sun is the, the temperatures are not so high that you're going to be hating life when you're out there working away and you can still get some spring rain and there's plenty of time in the season for the grass to recover nicely. Um, so that's when I would I would do that. May, um, May, June are like the best months for it. When I plan to do my lawn, based on how fast it's greening up and how well it's, how well it's doing, I'll probably be top dressing and 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 doing my um, my Arden 15 probably the first week of May if I can. I have to start like planning things and see if I can get everything lined up. But that's that could be a thing um, if the current warming trend holds true. So yeah, great question, Dalvin, and uh, hopefully that uh, that was helpful. Let's see what other questions we got going on here. Um, Brad H says, happy Easter. Happy Easter, uh, Brad. It says, who or who has or who, who might have the Flow Zone in stock? Good question, sir. So the Flow Zone, man, they, they are selling those things like hotcakes. I'm not sure if it's all the content that everybody's making that always keeps talking about them. But they, they seem to be selling them as fast as they can build them. You can check Amazon. Um, you know, that they, they get them in stock every now and then. Uh, Do My Own has them. Uh, you can check Flowzone's website directly. They might have it, but I mean, Amazon uh, tends to get them in and then they go out. So just keep checking, just keep checking, you know, and then eventually you might get lucky and you might see a Typhoon 2 and that's going to be pretty awesome. One, one thing I saw is that Flowzone is coming out with like a, it looks like a Typhoon 2.5. It looks like I thought I saw and, and I think the difference is it's supposed to be variable, but it's like variable 
with like stops, I think. So it's like, you know, different pressure settings that are like, um, like detents, it looks like. I haven't actually seen it, but I think that's it, what it's gonna be based on um, looking at their uh, their description. So I'm not, not sure about that. So you might wanna wait and get the Typhoon 2.5 maybe. You might get the, the new hotness, right? All right. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, yeah, and another a couple of votes for the, for the flow zone. Josh Habib says, get that flow zone is fire. You'll love it. And then uh, LG say, I want the flow zone too, but it's sold out everywhere. That's the thing, man. As soon, and it, they do come in stock. So just keep checking Amazon. When they come in, they don't last long. They, they get sold out, especially this time of year. Everyone's starting to get all their lawn gear um, ramped up to get going for the season. So it, right now is a tough time of the year to be buying that kind of stuff. But just keep checking and you can, you'll be able to get it. All right. Let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, he said, Brad's talking about hundred dollars to get the guy to drop it off his truck. It's pretty funny. Uh, let's see what else we got going on. Okay. So R. Colson says, Ron, uh, we talked about T-Jet set up on your, on your sprayer a few weeks ago. I took the leap and man, those nozzles are a game changer. Very cool. Uh, such an upgrade. You should check it out. Okay. So I'll have to look into that. Um, the, the, again, like the thing I was thinking about the T-Jet, the thing that I'm concerned about is, um, you know, the, a lot of the content that I make, uh, and especially the, the application rates, like the calibration um, information that one that's in the course um, is based on like a standard flow zone or a standard um, a standard Chapin sprayer, right? So if I I don't know um, what the flow rates would change to if I were to go to a T jet, I'm sure it's they're sure they're pretty cool. Um, and and I might get one. I need to get my hands on one and just just to try out and see what it, what it's like and just to see how much of a difference it makes. And if it's if it's that cool of a, that big of a difference, I might just make an addendum or, or make some notes saying, hey, this is what how the the flow rates change. If it's really that much of a game changer, R. Colson, like you've been saying it, Josh Habib's been saying it. So maybe there is something to it. Maybe I do need to look into. Uh, one of these uh, these T jet sprayers and or T jet tips and see how they they go. So we shall see. All right. Um, yeah. Money May says thanks for answering. I meant to say real mower, not a greens mower. Thanks again. Yeah. So yeah. So Money May. So for in your case again to revisit your question um, for taller cool season grass, a true cut might work. But again, like the heights of cut for a real mower shine is inch and a half and lower. You really don't want to be into that two inch range. I mean, it's just not gonna, I mean, even if it cuts it, it's not gonna go, not gonna work out as well. It's kinda like, it's kinda like what I always say about Bermuda, like using a rotary mower on Bermuda is technically not using the best tool for the job, it can work. Just like, it's the same thing as using like a real mower on turf type tall fescue, it can work, but it's not the best tool for the job. You're not gonna get as good a result as you would with a proper rotary mower, if that makes sense. And you'll save yourself a lot of money because rotary mowers are a lot cheaper than real mowers, both to buy to maintain. If you if you hit a if you hit hit a rock with a with a rotary mower blade, as Alan was so nice to remind me, you know it's like fifteen bucks, twenty bucks to get a new mower, a new blade versus like you know several hundred uh, with a, a real mower. So you know a, there's some definitely some good things to be said for using a rotary mower if that's what your grass needs. All right, let's see what else we got. Um, Going on here, Art Williams chimes in. He says, hey, Ron, appreciate your videos. Thank you so much, Art. Thanks, I appreciate you watching the content. Appreciate the support, as always. Thank you so much. Uh, it means means a ton. Uh, let's see what else we got. What else we got going on here? Uh, Art says, um, my lawn is, is so dormant right now. Neighbors have considerable amount more green up than, I, than me. Should I be concerned? No, not really. Um, like my lawn is green, is greener than my neighbor's lawn, but I can, I can promise you that if that in six weeks, like all the lawns around here are pretty much going to be green for the most part, like by mid May, they're all going to be out of dormancy. The things that could be causing the problem <coughs> that it's causing your lawn could be if you're getting more shade, right? If you, if your lawn gets a little bit more shade than theirs does, so it gets less direct sunlight. It can make a difference. If you, um, if your height of cut is taller. So if you're, if they scalp their lawn, um, to where it's getting more heat, more direct sunlight, that could help with the green up. If they're, if the quality of their soil is better, so their soil is healthier, that can also help with the reason why their lawn is greening up. Um, so, you know, if you, if you're concerned about, or if you just want to kind of dig into the geek out a little bit art and make sure there's nothing weird going on, get a soil test done. It's something I would recommend if you've not done one as yet this year, um, you know, go to the golf course lawn store here and you can, um, pick up one of these guys. Uh, it's the My Soul Test Kit. It's the one I like. It's really, really good. And if you're going to get one, also get one, get the package that comes with this, one of these guys with the um, the tool, the uh, the aeration tool. So this guy's like, this will save you a whole lot of time and you're not going to destroy your lawn um, trying to get a soil sample out. One of these guys, literally you sit there and stick it in, twist, pull out and job done. You just do that, you know, 10, 10 different spots around your lawn 
and uh, throw it in here, mail it out, and then in a week, you're gonna have your results and you can know if there's something else going on with your soil that we need to address um, you know, for drought this season. But I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, but if you're, again, if you really want to know for sure if there's anything that could be holding you back, a soil test is the best way to, uh, to know that. But great, great question. And thank you so much for uh, watching the content. I appreciate it. All right. Let's see what other questions we got here. Um, let's see. So Jay Pompano says, hey, Ron, dinner again with the fam. Made it. Hey, well, dude, you're taking care of, you're having dinner with the fam. That's important. That's the important thing, dude. At least you're here now. You're here now, man. Is And you press the like button ever so gently. I appreciate it, Jay. It's pretty awesome. He says, is there a tip when microbes start rocking? Uh, yeah, around 50, 55 degrees. That's when the micro, that's when microbial activity tends to pick up in, uh, in the soil. Assuming when, at, when the grass is actively growing, Carbon Pro G, Carbon Pro L, best time, thanks. So Carbon, Carbon Pro G, anytime, whenever you want, as long as the ground's not frozen. Carbon Pro L, um, again, it, now you can, be, you can be applying it now if you want. There's no really no, um, no wrong answer on that one um, either, Jay. Uh, kind of like with malorganite, if you ever look at like, um, like look at malorganites, uh, like their documentation, they talk about when it begins to really begin taking effect or when it begins to working, they'll say, you know, when soil temperatures are in the fifties. And the reason for that is that that's when microbial activity picks up, which breaks down the malorganite and makes the, the iron, I mean, sorry, makes the, um, the nitrogen available to the grass. So generally 50, 50 to 55 degrees, that's like the magic temperature where the soil really begins to come to life when all the microbial activity really begins to pick up. Um, and things begin to take off. So yeah, that's uh, that's when you'll start to really see the benefits, Jay. Great question, man. And thank you so much for like coming in the live stream and touching that like button ever so gently. I appreciate it. Very, very nice. All right, let's see what else we got going on here. And Josh, will be another vote here for the for the T-Jet, for the flow zone with the T-Jet. He says, even I can't mess it up because I add the T-Jet adapter. I'm gonna have to get one. I'll have to get one and try it out just to satisfy you guys. We'll see. All right, so we got a super chat here from Travis Wilson. Super chat received. They, uh, Travis says, come on, everyone, hit the like button. It's the least we can do. Thanks for continuing to do this live Q&A. You're very welcome, Travis. I mean, again, it's it's a service to you guys. It's a service to me. I get to learn like what kind of issues you guys are learning about or go, are going through. I get to, uh, you know, get research topics. So it's it's fun for both of us. It, be, it benefits both of us. And, and it's something fun to do on a Friday night, right? There are definitely worse things we could be doing than talking about grass and soil microbial activity and carbon and T-jet, you know, nozzles than uh, on a Friday night, then, you know, so it's good, good times, good times. All right, uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Um, uh, Tom K says, uh, happy, happy Friday, Ron. Are you using uh, Lesco Moisture Manager or Hydrotain products at all? I am, Tom. Actually, I am using, I actually put down Hydrotain, uh, when is it? When did it rain? It rained Thursday. I put it down, no, yeah, it rained Thursday and I put it down the day before, whatever it was. It, it rained earlier this week and I put down my Hydrotain application um, earlier this week. So yes, I am using that. And if you if you wanna see, there's a video that I did um, that uh, that that actually talks about that. Like there's the video that I did on, on watering. If you look at my most recent video, it's got me being hit in the head with a, spr with a sprinkler head with a sprayer uh, water. Um, that video, towards the end of it, I talk about Hydrotain um, as, a, as a way to save uh, water. So yeah, I am using that. It is on my lawn um, and I'm you know, sure I'm gonna get great results with it. So. Great, uh, great question. Great question. All right, let's see what other questions we got going on here. Uh, let's see. So, um, TX Ranger Kid 222, I'm guessing he's from Texas and he likes the Rangers. And I don't know what the Kid or 222 is for, but he says, Hey, Ron, uh, most of my front yard is shaded for about two hours before sundown. So, it seems to have not caught a dormancy yet, unlike my neighbor across the street. Anything I can do to jumpstart it? Not really, uh, TX uh, Kid. Uh, 222 not really i mean if you're if you've not um if the lawn is beginning to green up right if it's starting to green up what you can do is uh and you've not scalped it you can lower the height of cut a little bit to, to allow a little bit more light a little more heat to get to it that can help some but what you're going to find is once the days start getting longer and we get start getting more heat those parts of your lawn will eventually catch up like if you even on my lawn right so you guys look at my lawn and say oh the lawn's all green it looks amazing and it does look pretty good right now but the areas like where those three shrubs are in the back and then also along the front where there's also a shrub there too that that casts a little bit of shade like those parts of my lawn are still thin and by the time you know this time next month they should be they should have caught up to the rest of the lawn like they're going to the, 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 there'll be enough sunlight enough heat the days will be a little bit longer that it will catch up so there's not something there's nothing you can really do other than perhaps if the grass in that that part of the lawn is really really tall maybe bring it down a little bit assuming you're dealing with bermuda you didn't tell me but i'm assuming it's bermuda um, I would bring the height of cut down a little bit. That will help some, 
but really once the days get longer, you're going to be just fine. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat it too much. It's just based on where you are, where your lawn is, where the sun passes over your lawn, all those things will, will factor into, you know, when your lawn comes out of dormancy, but I promise you it's going to be just fine. Just give it, give it some time. All right. What are the questions we have here? Uh, let's see. So, uh, B Gaines is talking about Carbon Pro L. He says, hey, Ron, I'm considering putting down Carbon Pro L tomorrow via a four gallon backpack sprayer. Need help with measurements for 11,500 square feet foot lawn. How many times will I need to fill the tank? Great question, B Gaines. So um, the way I would do that is I, you're gonna use uh, three tanks, three fill ups. So I would mix the Carbon Pro L um, at a rate of, let me see, the Carbon Pro L, it's, uh, if you're just starting out, the maintenance rate on that is one ounce per thousand. The starter rate is two ounces per thousand. So in your case, you're gonna put it, you're gonna, you're gonna mix um, eight ounces of Carbon Pro L with four gallons of water. And you're gonna apply that, that four gallon mix, that four ta that tank of four gallons over 4,000 square feet. So about a third of your lawn. And you're gonna do that two more times. And you're gonna have maybe a little bit left over um, for that last 500 square feet, but you can just apply it. You can, you can just, you know, walk over your lawn and just get rid of that last little bit. But, um, but that is what I would do. I mean, yeah, so as far as, far as to, and just to recap, you're gonna do, you're gonna fill up your sprayer three times. Because what you're describing is literally what my lawn is like. My lawn is right at 12,000 square feet and it takes me three fill ups with a flow zone to cover the entire lawn. So in your case, again, just to recap, your, your rate is gonna be um, two ounces per thousand. So in the case of a four gallon backpack sprayer, it's gonna be four times that. So eight ounces of Carbon pro -L with four gallons of water and then whatever else you decide to put down. If you have the carbon kit and you wanna put that down at the same time, you can do that. If you, want, if you have your liquid fertilizer that you wanna put down, you can do that as well at the same time, just as long as you make sure that the rate that you're mixing those products at is, um, is, is assuming 4,000 square feet of coverage and then you're good to go. You are good to go, sir. That is what I do on my lawn. Literally what you're describing is exactly uh, what my lawn is. I'm, I'm a little bit bigger, but I mean, it's close enough that it's gonna be the, the same process. Very cool. Very, very, very nice. All right. What other questions we got going on here? And then Tom is saying, yeah, he's been using Carbon Pro L for a year. Good stuff. I'm glad to hear it, sir. Uh, I'm glad you guys are enjoying the product. And let's see what else we have going, going on here. Um, TX Ranger Kid says, I took my MySoil uh, test and both the front and backyard have off the charts calcium contents. What kind of considerations do I need to make uh, besides generally treating for high alkaline soil? Um, if you don't mind, um, TX Ranger, send me send me the results. I'd like to take a look at that. I'd like to see exactly what you, when you say off the charts, um, I'd like to see what um, what exactly you have going on. So my email address, if you don't mind, is here. It's ron at golfcourselawn.com. If you send me an email tonight, I will look over tonight and I will get you an answer tonight. But I want to have the actual results in front of me that I'm looking at to be able to give you um, a good answer to, to, to your question and come up with like a, a plan that, that'll help uh, move things um, in the right direction. So if you don't mind, email me and I will get you an answer uh, this evening, sir. Very good, great question. Very great, great question. Let's see, what else we got going on here? Um, wise guy says, could a swordman cut 1.5 inches? I'd like to keep my cut, my head of cut at one or one and a half inches. I don't know about 1.5 inches, wise guy. I, it'll do one inch. One inch shouldn't be a problem at all, um, but I don't know about 1.5 inches. It probably will, because um, it probably will go up that high, I think. Um, but I, I know one inch is not gonna be an issue at all. So um, if you want, just give the guys, give Lee, and Andrew a call um, at uh, at Real Rollers, and they'll talk. They'll talk to you, tell you all about it, or like join one of the Facebook groups. There's a there's a Swordman Facebook group, I think. If you're on Facebook, like get on there and ask them. They'll be able to tell you. But I I I, I want to say that you can go up to 1.5 inches. That that should be okay. One inch, I'm positive it will be fine. 1.5 inches, I'm not I'm not so sure about. But it's probably gonna. It probably will do that as well too. Uh, great question. Let's see, what we got here Princess Cut Lawn Care in the house. George, what's going on, man? He's just stopping by, just stopping by to say hi, middle of filming again. Uh, thanks, George. I appreciate you taking taking some time out of your live stream to, or out of your like your editing and filming work to stop in and say hi on the channel. I hope maybe I'll make an appearance in your video again. It's really cool. If you guys didn't see George's latest video, I'm, I think it's his latest one still at this point. Um, he's talking about what is he talking about? Not a leveling rake. I forget what the topic was. It was I think I think it was um, oh, it was about um, pre-emergent. His video on pre-emergent. If you look in the background, you'll actually see he's got me playing in the live stream on an iPad in the background. So. Uh, it's a cool like Easter egg. Thank you so much for that, George. I appreciate the uh, the support, and uh, it was it was fun. Thanks for coming in to uh, to say hi. And now get back to work, man. Get back to filming. You know, no no goofing off in the live stream. You got got content to make. All right, uh, super chat here from Eddie Garcia, or from Eric Garcia. I'm sorry, sir. Super chat received. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thanks so much. And let's see what else we got going down here. Uh, uh, Tr Willie Styles uh, seventy two says. Um, I cut down a couple of trees that were killing my Bermuda grass. The remaining soil is very sandy. 
What steps should I take to turn that into healthy soil? Um, thanks, Will in, in Fayetteville. Great question, Will. Um, so um, if you've not done a soil, when you say it's very sandy, um, like just because it's sandy doesn't necessarily mean it's bad soil. We, we should probably, if you've not done a soil test as yet, let's do that because then I'll be able to tell you, hey, let's, let, these are like, as far as like fertilizer and lime or, you know, whatever, or, or, or the other products we need to apply to the, to the lawn to help improve it. Like this is going to tell you that. That's going to tell you the answers to that. Um, outside of that, if you want something you can do outside of the soil test, um, if you've got a site one nearby, go get yourself like, you know, a couple bags of carbon pro G and start applying that to your lawn. Start adding, um, biochar and compost to your, to your soil. That's going to help improve the quality of the soil in your lawn while you wait to get a soil test done and get the results back. Um, another option is the Essential G that's on the golf course lawn. So if you don't have a site one nearby, you can order Essential G, also a great product. Um, and that will also help improve your lawn, your soil as, um, as well. Um, but yeah, that, that's what I would do. I'd get a soil test done. Um, I would start incorporating carbon into your lawn care program. Um, and then based on the soil test and the carbon, we should be able to get the soil in a much better position that get, and get grass um, growing and doing really well in that part of the lawn. But good job. I mean, you did the, you did the thing that is the hardest to um, get right from, to, and, and that is getting rid of the trees. Cause really without like sunlight, like everything else, nothing else really matters. You know, like you can, you think about it. If I, my lawn looks really, really nice right now, right? If I went out tomorrow and took like a bowl, like a dish bowl or something, right? Or a pot and took it and put it over a spot of my lawn, in the middle of my lawn. And I left it like that for like, you know, two or three days, four days, and then took it off. Like there'd be like dead looking grass there. It'd look really, really bad, right? So like it really drives home the point that sunlight is like hugely important to getting a really good lawn. So, uh, and you, you got that part right. So everything else, everything else we can fix. So you got, you got the sunlight, you got the sunlight part done. So now we're gonna work on the soil and then it's just stripe action, just mowing. So you got the, you got the, the big one, you got the sunlight worked out, Willie. So good job, good job, very, very good. Um, what are the questions we have here? So I got a question, I gotta go back up here from um, Herbert Agnes about seeding and pre-emergence. Um, is it a good idea to, to seed after putting down pre-emergence? No, not, not really, uh, Huburn. Um, and I guess really you don't, you want to avoid that because what pre-emergence, how they work, or how most of them work anyway, like the more, more, the more common ones like prodiamine is they, um, they, they, they interrupt or they, they limit the ability of, of a plant of weeds to grow roots. So if you think about it, when it, when a new seed, when new grass seed germinates, right. And it's trying to grow roots. That's the first thing it tries to do is grow roots to get like nutrients. And then it starts to try to growing up like pre-emergent prevents that from happening. It prevents roots from growing. So if you're putting down seed, um, it's going to negatively affect the germination you get with your seeds. So I, I really wouldn't do it. Now, here's the thing. Last year I did put down, um, pre-emergent on my lawn in the spring and just to test, just to see. And I guess if you'll, you guys will notice like when I put down like um, the Arden 15 last year, I did it super early. because I just wanted to test to see like, you know, I know they always say 65 degrees, but what happens if I put it down really early? Is, is it going to germinate? Am I going to get any kind of results at all? So I, I did what I thought as far as my testing last year, um, one of the one of the not so great scenarios of where I had pre-emergent in the lawn and I applied it probably a little earlier than I should have. And I still got decent germination, not great germination, but I still, like some of the seeds still grew. But if you want the best result here, Bern, I would not um, apply pre-emergent to your lawn if you're planning to seed it. It's just not like you're you're working against yourself if you do that. But great question. So for anyone else that asked that question, you know, if you pre-emergent and seed, it's going to make your seeding uh, not work as well. You're going to get less, you're going to get worse results by doing that. All right. What are the questions we got going on here, guys? Uh, da -da -da -da. Um, it says, yeah, Brad says, Keith and Kevin are great. They are great. Costumes are pretty awesome. I like Keith and Kevin. They're, you know why I like them? They're very real. Like they're like, they, I, the people that I, I resonate with, like, like what you see with them is what you get. And that's, that's what I like about them. They seem just like really genuine people. Right. So that's, uh, that's, what's cool about them. Uh, Lincoln says, will Arden 15 ever take over my common Bermuda over the years of seeding? Or is it best to kill off, kill it all off at once and apply the car, R, the Arden 15 this year, the latter. So if your goal is to replace your common Bermuda with Arden 15 Lincoln, the best way to do that is to kill your existing grass. Like get out there with glyphosate, nuke your existing lawn. You're probably gonna have to do it twice um, and then put down your seed. That's gonna that's going to allow you to get like the most even growth, even color um, to where it's gonna look e fairly even overall. You know what I mean? That's that's gonna be the best the, the best way to go. That's if that, if, if you're fine with like um, torching your lawn, like, like, you know, putting glyphosate on it and getting rid of your common Bermuda. That is what I would do. Here's the thing you need to realize though. The common Bermuda is probably always going to be a thing. Even after like a couple of glyphosate applications, there's probably still going to be a little bit that's still going to come back and still rise up. But you know, the Arden 15 at that point will be the dominant 
Bermuda type in the lawn. So the Arden 15 will be the outlier, if that makes sense. So to answer your question, yes, this, the latter is gonna get you the best result. Great question, great, great question. Uh, let's see. LG's like physics universe. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a, I'm a I'm a nerd man. I'm a computer geek. I'm, I work. I mean, I work in information security. I'm like a technology person. So anything having to do with like rockets and stuff going fast and you know that kind of thing, I am I am all about. I am a big fan of it. Uh, let's see. Renewable says I want to see the Supra. You know what I'll do is I'll, I'll take a picture. I'll take a picture of it and I'll just post it on my Instagram on my on my non lawn care Instagram. Uh, if you want, I'll do that, uh, but I won't post it on the channel because it has nothing to do with lawn care and it'll make a bunch of people mad. So that's why I won't. I don't do any car content on the channel anymore. So, okay, let's see what other questions we have uh, going on here. You can probably have to send me these results. TND zero uh, seven says Rally, North Carolina, soil test done. Very good, sir. It suggests a nine zero zero total nitrogen um, five point seven low phosphorus. 5.2, optimal, potassium, 40.063, optimal. Any other suggestions? Thanks, and enjoy the info. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, TN, uh, TNDC07, send me the send me the results in the, in the email, like email them to me. Like my uh, email is here. It's already up on the screen. Ron at golfcourselon.com. Send me a, a picture of the soil test results, um, and then I'll be able to give you some suggestions. If you send it to me tonight, you will get an answer back tonight. I will make sure I stay up and I get... Um, anyone that asks a question or emails me tonight about um, something that we were talking about in the live stream, like a, a, something with soul testing, um, I will get you an answer tonight. So you won't have to wait too long for it. Great, great question. And congratulations. Good job on getting a soul test done, man. It's, it's, a, it's a really, really good idea uh, for getting the most out of your lawn. So it's, that's really good. All right. Let's see what other questions we got here. What other points? Uh, William Foster gave me a super chat. Super chat received. Thank you, William. Thanks so much. And then uh, Greg asked a question. How careful do I need to be with a real mower around driveways, curbs, and sidewalks? Your video on Monday scared me. I don't want to mess my blades up. So here's the thing, um, Greg. Uh, around around sidewalks, um, it's actually, it's nearly not that bad. The, the reason what happened on my lawn is um, it's like the perfect storm because literally the grass is, was like here and the curb that I hit is like up high like this. And literally what, what happened is, as I was rounding the corner, I just went around the corner a little too soon and literally the worst part of the mower that could have hit that curb caught it, like the right edge caught it and it and it the, the reel dug in and, and it, it bent and broke the reel. Um, had I hit that, that same spot like at the middle of the mower, it would have like scraped right over it. So it wouldn't have been a problem. So whenever I mow like, um, like my patio, what I tend to do is like um, the mower tends to overhang a little bit onto the um, a little bit over onto the to the the, the patio onto the hardscape. So I leave like, most of it on the lawn and I let a little bit of it hang over onto the hardscape, and I get a really good result that way. So you do need to be careful, um, especially when you're especially when you're dealing with like a hard surface that is taller taller than the grass. So if the if the grass is higher and the hardscape is here, you're typically fine, you're typically good to go. It's whenever it's whenever it's the opposite where the hardscape is is taller than the grass is when you start running into issues and you got to be got to be careful with damaging things. Um what other questions we got going on here? Uh let's see. Christian says, "Hey Ron, how do you repair your soil if it's not balanced?" Uh thanks again. Uh get a, get a soil test result done, Christian. If you've not done, got one done, get one of these. Go to the golf course lawn store here and get a my soil test kit. Um, get your soil test results, and then when you when you get those, it'll tell you what your soil is missing, and then we will know what to, to add to it to fix it to correct the issues that are in your soil. So yeah, soil test is the way to answer that question. All right, so we got a question here. <laughs> left tools, left tools trolling me slightly. Is it? It says Ron, left tool. Oh boy, here we go. He says Ron, my wife is mad. I forgot her anniversary. Some marital advice. Um. I don't know. I don't know what to help you on that one, man. Um, Tiffany's? Does she like sparkly stuff? Does she like? Does she like jewelry? If she likes jewelry. You can uh, you can take her. You can go get her some um, some sparkly stuff. Nice dinner, perhaps. Probably you know you could double it up. You could do like some hardware, some like some nice you know go to visit Tiffany's or Zales or something like that, along with a nice dinner. You can do those two things and say, sweetie, I'm you know I, I I'm sorry I forgot. You know we've been together. It's just you know with us the time just flies by and it just seems like you know a year is like a day with you and that's you know whatever i mean she'll she'll forgive you i mean i'm i'm pretty sure if she's still around you're probably just fine if you if she's still there to even have to be able to try and make up you're probably going to be just fine uh left tool but you know sparkly stuff and dinner if she likes that if she's into jewelry then that's fine um i wouldn't buy a mower or anything and tell her it's for the family i wouldn't go i wouldn't go that route that's probably not going to be well received unless she's into mowers but yeah you know Whatever she likes to do, just make a day or two all about her and, and beg for forgiveness, plead for forgiveness. That's what I would, I would suggest, sir. Great question. Even though it has nothing to do with lawn care, it's still a fun one. 
All right, um, Breck TV chimes in. He says, hey Ron, wondering if you have any experience with the 25 inch McLean. Been using mine for about 15 years with a smooth roller. Smooth, easy to work on, most amazing, half inch high to cut. Sir, if you've been using your McLean for 15 years and you're getting a good job with it, it doesn't matter what I think. I think you should keep, I think you should keep rocking it. Like if it's, if it's doing the job, if you're getting a great result with it and like you love the way your lawn looks when you cut with it, I would continue just, just going with it, man. I mean, it's, um, you know, the, the best mower is again, one that fits your grass type, but also one you're comfortable with, one you know how to get really good results out of. And uh, if you've been using the McLean for 15 years, just keep uh, keep with what you got, you know what I mean? That's, that's And I'm kind of that way, you know, like I like, I like my Greens Master and I don't really think, I can't see myself really changing to anything else after that because I love the way the lawn looks with it and I've, I've you know, figured out how to get a pretty good result with it. So I can't see myself really ever uh, replacing it. Not at this point anyway, maybe with another Greens Master, but I can't see changing it just for no reason. So if you're getting good results with your McLean at half an inch, I would keep, work, um, don't don't mess up what's working is what I would say, uh, Blaze, uh, Breck TV. Great question. All right, uh, so Dimitri says, hey, Ron, you're the best. Love your live shows, man. Thank you, sir. Always learning from you. Thank you so much for watching. I would not be here were it not for you guys watching the live stream, so I appreciate the support. Thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. Um, the wind shirt, talking about plant growth regulator now, it says, hey, Ron, T next temp is sensitive. What's the best time to start application? I've got a great green up, and it's, uh, and of course, it's not growing that fast right now, but I don't want to, to get ahead of me before um, before seeding. Okay, good point. So for me, I'm probably gonna be a little bit earlier on T-Nex this year on um, Wind Chariot. By the end of this month, I'll be putting T-Nex down. Um, so probably like the third week of April, um, third week of this, of this month, if the warming trend holds, is when I'll be putting down T-Nex. Uh, worst case scenario is gonna be May 1st. You know, May, May 1st is gonna be the absolute latest that T-Nex will go down on my lawn. But if, um, with how quickly it greened up this year with everything I've been doing to it, and if the temps are nice and warm and they can, they continue, um, I might get down a little bit sooner. But you guys can, if you guys don't, don't worry. I, there's definitely gonna be footage on that. I'm gonna film a con some content uh, showing, um, putting down the PGR. I mean, all I've already got content on it. I will do it again this year because you guys seem to like it. And it'll be just something fun to talk about, right? I can make better content this year, so why not? Uh, but yeah, for, in your case, Wind Chariot, you are, I think you're in, are you in North Carolina, South Carolina? You're in the Southeast. At any rate, um, later on this month, you're probably gonna be good to go as far as T-Nex. And what I would recommend is whenever on, the, on your first application, mix a little bit of a liquid fertilizer in with it. So like the Turfplex 4, this is a great option. Or if you've got some of the liquid fert of choice that has a little bit of un, like a low nitrogen and a little bit of iron, that's gonna help um, with the yellowing that T-Nex um, tends to, to, to cause the first time you put it down. Um, so just, just something to consider as a little tip. I mean, you don't have to do it. All that's gonna happen is the yellowing that you have will go away the first time you mow it. But if you wanna kind of reduce how much yellowing you get at all, add a little bit of liquid fertilizer with um, a splash of nitrogen, that, with a splash of iron in it, that will really that will really help. Great question, great question. I too have the problem with the greening up too soon, sir. Very awesome. LG, thank you so much for the super chat, sir. I appreciate it. Super chat received. All right, very, very cool, very cool. Uh, Left Tools looking for additional advice in the in the live stream on how to get uh, make the wife happy. Always fun. Uh, let's see what other questions we, we got here. Uh, Donnell Burrell says, what's up, Ron? Lawn Academy in the house. Thank you, sir. Thank you for actually being part of the Golf Course Lawn Academy. And if you guys are interested in that, golfcourselawn.com. That's where you guys can find out more about that. It's like lifetime access. $97 gets you access to that and all my future content in the course and the private Facebook group where we where we um, you get more personal attention where you hang out and talk about things, talk about lawn care issues. Um, it's a great, great, uh, great group of people and a lot of behind the scenes stuff that, that you don't that, that YouTube doesn't get to see and really no one else really gets to see. So if you're interested in that, uh, golfcourselawn.com. Uh, so you're saying uh, your lawns were 50% green. Awesome. It says, can I start uh, to push it with a stronger fert? Also, will the product hydrotain help my lawn since I don't have irrigation? Um, no to the first question and yes to the second question. So the first part of the question, should you push with longer, larger fert? I, I wouldn't as yet. There's just not, no reason to um, quite yet. You know, it's all, you know, you can think of it, um, Donnell, think of it almost like um, when you take vitamins, right? Like take so you take vitamin C, like a little bit of vitamin C, like a, the, the amount, like the daily recommended dose of vitamin C is good because that's how much your body can use, right? If you take like, you know, a ton of it, like you take like, like three tablets of vitamin C, what's going to happen? Your body's just going to get rid of it, right? You're just going to, you're, you're going to, when you go to the bathroom, you're just going to get rid of the, of the excess um, vitamin C. The same kind of thing happens with your lawn. Like right now, the 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 nitrogen your lawn only really needs so much nitrogen. This is only still greening up. Like the nitrogen demands are are relatively low. So just, I would I would stick with a nice 
low rate. Um, I would not push it. I would not push a lot of a lot of growth right now. Um, kind of like what's in that calendar. Like the, the calendar that's in the the academy. Just follow that. You're gonna get good results with that. Like literally at this point, this time of the this time of the year for the beginning of April, um, you can be putting down about half a pound of nitrogen, which is plenty for right now. So, you know, as you, and as you, if you want to add more, you can supplement that with like your Turflex or some other liquid um, fertilizer to supplement that if you want to, but too much nitrogen right now, not necessary. And then hydrotain, as far as since you don't have irrigation, um, it that should definitely help with, um, with keeping water in the root zone, with drawing water towards the roots and helping the grass to do well, um, even when you don't have um, without irrigation. So something that I would definitely consider um, adding to your, to your program, especially since, you apply it and it works for like three months. It's like, a, you know, really you're talking about you'd apply it now and then you'd apply it again in, let's see, so April, May, June. So in July, you do it again and that's going to take you out through the rest of the season. So yeah, I, I absolutely would look into doing that. Great, great question. All right. Let's see what other questions we got going on here. Uh, Scott O'Hare saying he's loving the Carbon Pro G. We've been putting it down every month just to add to the normal re regime. I just put down um, Humic 12 and RGS a few days ago, starting to wake up and pop. That's awesome, man. Glad to hear that the lawn is doing well, sir. It's pretty awesome. Sounds like you're doing uh, you're doing well. Uh, let's see. What other questions do we have here? What other questions we got going on? Tony Valdez says, love your vids. Thank you so much, Tony. I appreciate it. Appreciate you watching. Thanks so much. I appreciate the support. And, uh, and Lincoln is saying, thanks so much. Uh, you've helped me so much over the last years. And that's honestly, um, Lincoln, that's like one of the best, that's the, the, the best, uh, you know, comment I can get. So, I mean, if, if my, the little bit of advice that I give on, on the YouTube content and the live stream, or even an email, if we correspond back and forth, helps you get your grass a little greener, that is the whole mission of the, uh, the channel. So I'm glad that, that you've gotten, uh, good results by, uh, by following, you know, a little bit of my advice. So thanks so much. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, let's see. What else we have going on here? So Dan W has a question about tenacity. He says, can I put down tenacity after I put down grub preventer? I have a cool season grass in Canada. Thanks, Ron. Um, so here's the thing. I don't really do a cool season, um, cool season uh, grass, Dan. I know that, that tenacity does have some lights or some mild pre-emergent um, uh, uh, properties to it. I don't know that it's, it's technically a pre or what you'd consider like a, a, a full on pre-emergent. Um, so I guess it depends on what, what problem you're trying to solve. If you're trying to take care of like actively growing weeds, um, then for, and a cool season lawn, then tenacity is probably a great result. But if you're looking for something like as strictly as a pre-emergent, like you're looking for something that's going to give you like several months of control of um, preventing weeds from growing, I don't think ten tenacity is probably not the best choice. Uh, you probably want to use something like a prodiamine or something along those lines. Um, that's that's a like a true pre-emergent that's going to give you several months of uh, of coverage. That would be that would be my advice. And as far as um, the grub preventer, the two aren't linked, so it's not. Yeah, you can do those independently. You can put them down on the same day. You can do them staggering them out. Doesn't doesn't really matter. They're they're completely separate um, from each other. They don't doesn't doesn't really matter the order of when you do those. Uh, great, great. Um, very, very great stuff here. And then we have a left tool says, Ron, gives great advice. Glad y'all all tuned in. Thumbs up on the vid. Uh, thanks so much, sir. And if, yeah, if you guys are, are new to the live stream, if you're coming in and if you're just, if you've not touched that like button ever so gently, please do so now. I'd really appreciate it. And left tool, I'm not sure. Is it my lawn care advice that you're saying is decent or is it the relationship advice is decent? I'm not sure which one you're going with, but I mean, hopefully, hopefully they're both useful, sir. And uh, thanks, uh, thanks for for chiming in the live stream. I know you guys are are pretty busy with all the content you guys are making. So thanks for uh, for stopping in and, and supporting the channel. I really really appreciate it. Um, Christian says get her a soil test. I would not do that. I would not follow Christian's advice on that. I don't think that's a good job. JG, a lady, is correct. Tiffany should do the trick. Go with Tiffany's to to help her out. All right. Let's see what other questions do we have here. Um, Lenny says, how do you water the strip of grass? near to the sidewalk. Um, what, on grass strip or grass near the sidewalk? Oh, you're talking about the vanity strip. Oh yeah, so the vanity strip, um, Lenny, has a sprinkler head in there. There is a sprinkler head. You don't see it, um, but if you actually, if you look at my video, so the video that I have on watering, um, the video that I just put out on watering yesterday, go that video, watch that video, or just kind of skip to the end of it. And in the eye, that's gonna be like uh, here in YouTube uh, on that one, the next video on irrigation, where I do like a deep dive or walkthrough of my all my irrigation zones, if you watch that video, when I get to zone six, when I get to zone six, 
that will show you six or five, six. When I get to zone six, when I get to zone six, that will show you the sprinkler, the, the irrigation that runs and that waters the um, the vanity strip. So it's a small little, it's like almost like a um, like a fizzer, like a very, very small sprinkler head that comes up that, that takes care of that. But there is one there that also waters that as well too. So yeah, if you want to see what it looks like, check out that video and you'll uh, you'll see you'll see that there. Very very cool. All right, great question. Um, let's see. Um, it says, do you listen to tunes when you cut your grass? I do. I do sometimes, sir. I listen to, um, I'll just put on Spotify and just, and just pick a tune or I'll sometimes put on like a, a play mix or something that, that I want, or I'll put on an ebook. Just depends on what mood I'm in. If I'm trying to be super productive, I'll mow the lawn and put on like an, an audio book. Um, if I just want to kind of just veg out, then I'll put on like Spotify and hit a playlist and just say, Hey, just, you know, give me some brain candy while I'm mowing the lawn. So it, I just, I mix, I tend to mix it up. I tend to mix it up. Uh, let's see here. It says, what did you do before YouTube? I appreciate all your help. It's more like, what do I do in addition to YouTube? So professionally, I work as an, I work in information security. I'm a I'm an information the, the, the my official title is information security researcher. Um, but but what that basically means in a nutshell is I as I help companies or organizations whenever bad guys break into their networks. Um, prevent that from happening again. So in a former life, what I used to do is what's called penetration testing, and what that means in a nutshell, is that companies, governments paid me to break into their networks, break, break into their systems. Pretty much they wanted to see, you know, how good is our security, and they would pay someone like me to basically attack their infrastructure and then write a really nice report and say, these are all the things that are broken, this is how I got in, these are the things you should fix. So that's what I do outside of um, YouTube. Outside of YouTube and martial arts, I my, my actual day job is an information secure is an information security. So, uh, great question. Thank you for, uh, for asking. Um, Let's see what else we got. What else we got to go on here? Um, let's see. Uh, what's your go? And then let's ask about my go-to tunes. It, it, it changes, man. It's sometimes it's everything. It's everything from Eagles to Dire Straits to Chameleon Air. So it's like everything from like rock to rap. Doesn't matter. It just depends on what I what I'm feeling like. I listen, I listen to pretty much everything. Some jazz. I mean, I listen to I listen to I listen to. I don't I don't have like a particular music type that I'm I'm like locked to. I listen to a little bit of everything. Uh, so yeah. Uh, very, very, very cool. Um, two other questions we got going on here. And yes, Winter, that's a great option. Brand Supreme Green with Teenex is a great, is a great choice. All right. Uh, we are winding down, guys. I think I'm, I'm about talking you guys out. Uh, let's see. What's, Cedric Thompson's in the house. What's going on, Cedric? How's it going? He says, you're laying, laying Celebration Bermuda on Sunday. That's awesome, dude. You better film it. That's going to be some awesome content. Like YouTube needs some more Celebration Bermuda grass content. So if you're putting down uh, Celebration Bermuda on Sunday, have the camera out. Definitely want to see that that happen. Very, very, very cool. Uh, let's see what other questions we got going on here. Uh, Helmet Rock is talking about next generation of real mowers. They will have a vacuum channel on the front to make the grass blades stand up straight before they cut. Um, yeah, but you know, they, that already, that's kind of already a thing, uh, Helmet. So like on some of, like on the Toros, pretty much, I think uh, uh, John Deers will do the same thing. Um, there are uh, groomer attachments. So whenever you're using a greens, uh, a greens mower, um, there's an attachment you can put on it that's called a groomer, and what it does is it, it's it's like it's like a, a light you can kind of call it like a light verticut, but it's really not a light verticut. What it does is it is it combs the grass and stands it up so that when it gets to the bed knife, you're presenting the grass more more straight so that you get a more even cut. So that, that what you're talking about kind of already exists, um, but it's just not really a thing that you see on home lawns that much. But that kind of already exists. Uh, what you're describing. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, yeah, Left Tool says, no Katy Perry, here's $5. I listen to Katy Perry. I do, I do listen to Katy Perry. Sometimes when I want to, when I want to rock out. Yeah, I listen to, I, I mean, I tell you, I listen to everything. Everything from like top 40 to pop, a little bit of everything. I don't, I don't have like a Katy Perry play mix Left Tool, but yeah, Katy Perry sometimes gets into the rotation. But yeah, I'm, I don't have anything with Katy, Katy Perry. All right, great question. And I, and I'm, I'm, I don't know why you're so obsessed about what I'm listening to in music, but there you go. You've got, you've, you got it out of me, sir. All right, uh, uh, question about mowing, back on topic. So Lenny Owens says, how often do you cut your lawn during the spring? So it depends, Lenny. Um, these days, uh, I'm cutting it every other day because I just I really like mowing. So I just I just get out there and just mow just when I just when I have time. Really what the lawn needs, if you're asking me what does the lawn need right now, it needs to be cut about twice a week. That's all it really, that it really calls for. Right? So I could cut it on a Monday and on a Thursday, and that would be enough for the lawn for the for the week. But I'm because I enjoy it. I just get out there and I just cut it, you know, because I just enjoy doing it. It, just, it takes me about an hour to do, not even. So um, you know, I just I enjoyed. I just I literally enjoy cutting my grass. So I it's like it's like some people go work out every day. 
I still work out quite a bit with martial arts, but then I also cut my grass because I enjoyed I enjoyed doing that. Um, so hopefully that helps um, answer your question. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I think that's um, that. Oh, actually, we have a question here from Austin B. I don't want to miss you out here. It's his first time Bermuda here in Texas. Thank you, Austin, for chiming in first time. His sod was late in the winter of 2020. Real mower this year, and I've noticed I have random stragglers of dead runners in the grass. Any idea of how to get rid of it? Huh. Um, I mean, as you cut the lawn more and more, um, um, Austin B, those will, those guys should they might actually root when 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 heat gets a little bit better. But as you get, as you cut the lawn more, like those will get taken off. So I wouldn't I wouldn't stress about it too much. I mean, it's still. You're in Texas and it's a relatively new lawn. Those are, I mean, the lawn's still coming out of dormancy. Like the, the way your lawn looks now, I can promise you a month from now, it's gonna look way better. And, it's, and it's the biggest, the best thing you can do to, to improve the look of your lawn is just to cut it more. So if you wanna, you wanna get rid of stragglers in your lawn or dead or dormant runners, just cut it, cut it, mow it more. The more you mow it, the more, you know, the more options you're gonna have for cleaning up the lawn and just kind of grooming it and helping it to grow out nice and laterally. And you're just gonna stimulate really, really good growth. So my, that would be my, uh, my recommendation. You know, you could also, I mean, it's new sod, so I wouldn't even, as far as like doing stuff like verticutting or um, or even like scarifying, I don't even want to, do, want to do any of that stuff right now. I would just cut, just cut it. Just, just pick up your mowing frequency and mow your lawn a lot, and that will do a lot towards helping improve uh, the quality of your lawn, sir. All right. Uh, what else do we have going on here? I think I think we're about um, out. Uh, and Donald says, brawn bare spots. I put down a light top dress over bare spots to help Bermuda fill in. That can help. Um, that can help Donnell, but it really, if it's sun, you, you want like sunlight, um, sunlight, and if, assuming the soil is good, that's gonna help the Bermuda um, really to fill in once heat starts to get here. If you wanna speed that up, you can plug and put some plugs in those bare spots. That is also gonna speed it up. Um, but a nice, a nice light layer of topsoil is not gonna hurt too. I mean, nice fresh organic material, won't hurt at all. Uh, what else we got going on here? Um, wind chariot, have you ever thought about a water feature out by those uh, huge rocks? Yeah, you would lose some grass, but you still got plenty. No, I, 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 here's the thing, you and like about six other people keep trying to get me to either plant a tree out there. Some people say, you know, put out a nice small Japanese maple, it'd be really nice. Do like a rock thing or put, put like a, um, a fire pit in there. Like everyone's trying to get me to ruin that, that spot that I just happen to like very much. So I'm not gonna, I'm not, it's not gonna happen. I, I, I spent a lot of time not having trees in my lawn and I'm not gonna go and add more trees um, back to it. I, the only thing that could potentially happen, and it's a, it's a, it's a very distant maybe, and it's probably never going to happen, is maybe a fire pit, maybe. But as far as like putting a tree in, absolutely not, because I, I don't want to do anything that's going to kill my grass. So that's probably never going to happen. But thanks for uh, for the suggestion, uh, Wind Chariot. So good to go. All right, I think we've got down to our um, last question here. So Josh Tassane says, anything I can do to control nuts edge poking through new sod laid six weeks ago. Can I spot treat it with sedge hammer or should I just deal with it till next season? Um, I would deal with it until six weeks ago. Yeah, I would deal with it until the lawn is better established. I was, you might not have to necessarily wait till next season, but if you did it six weeks ago, that is what, uh, February, mid-February? I'd say let's wait till like July, June, July. Um, and if you want to spot, if the sedge is still a thing, if you can't just pull it or get rid of it, trying to just so it's like outside of your out of your eyesight, if you want to put down a little bit of image, then like um, that's an option. Um, if you want to use sedge hammer, you could use it then. You could spot spray with it then. But let's give let's give the new lawn, the new sod, a chance to kind of catch itself, root properly, do really well, find its way in the world before we start putting any kind of herbicides on it. Like if you want, if the sedge if the sedges are kind of nasty, just go through and just pull them. If you said they're just they're poking through, so that kind of leads me to believe that it's not a mass outbreak and that we can probably manually pull them. I mean, they're gonna grow back, but that will at least get them out of your eyesight until June, July, when we can you know, spot spray with a herbicide when the lawn should have rooted a little bit better. So great, great, uh, great question. All right, uh, Andy says he took his, his uh, added a roller to his true cut today, took off the casters, great job, sir. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, and then the very last question of the night, um, Greg is saying, I have a large beer spot after the kids' trampoline went uh, to a new home. How can I get that area jump spot started? If as you, the, here's the thing, Greg, um, the fact that you move the trampoline away, once we start getting more heat and you start mowing that section, it's gonna fill in, it'll, it'll fill in, I promise you, because the trampoline does two things. One, where like the, um, the frame sits down, like that's gonna kill the grass in those areas. And then also the trampoline is like a shade. It's like a, like putting like a, a, a shade over the lawn. So that, that's cutting down the amount of sunlight that that area is getting by a lot. So now that we've, we've moved the trampoline um, and the sun can directly hit that spot, um, you're, it's gonna be fine. The biggest, the best thing you can do for it 
is um, just start cutting it. Cut the lawn and, and, and give it a reason to start growing laterally and fill in, and it's gonna do pretty well. Very, very cool. Great question. Well, guys, thank you guys all so much for, for hanging out again. Another, another Friday night, another great live stream. If you guys are in need of um, liquid carbon, like the golf course lawn car carbon kit, like the products from Miramichi Green that I love and use on my lawn, or uh, your liquid fertilizer of choice, which I, which I tend to use, which is the Turfplex, you can get all that stuff at the golf course lawn store, along with um, the carbon, the soil kits that I like to use, the, the my soil kits. They're very easy to use. I know some people um, like them, some people don't like them, but I love the, um, the ease of use of these kits and the fact that um, you can establish trends over time using them. So if you need a soil kit soil test, you can get that also at the golf course lawn store. And uh, I think that's all I got for you guys. Uh, the, the the course is live and, and going. A lot of people are signing up for it and we're having a great time. Uh, definitely consider checking it out if you want something a little bit more personal, a little more uh, you know, direct and, and access to some behind the scenes footage. Guys, thank you so much. Have a great, great weekend. If you guys have not yet started mowing your lawn, get out there and mow. Uh, go out and do something in your lawn. Have a fun time. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you this time next week. Have an amazing weekend.